Do you want to troll the audience and pretend season seven isn't coming out for like another six months? <laughs> be like, hey, instead, we're going to do interpretive dance over a podcast <laughs> for six months. Well, uh, Austin has been gone for a month. He's been he's been in his his cocoon. He's been he's been metamorphosizing, and he is back, ready to fly us on the wings over to season seven. Yeah, we were hoping for a beautiful butterfly. Um, I'll take a fat, ugly moth. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. about a cool moth? That does? Oh no, he wouldn't like that. No, I'd have taken a cool moth too, but. Um... Job at the bell, no sweat now, feeling swell. A gee golly, it's a beautiful day. You're gonna burn my troubles away. I'm going to live, light up the town. The walls that hold me, I'm melting down. I'm rising up like a mushroom cloud. I'm going to live, light up this you missed us <laughs> what if there was the opposite of a luna moth and it, ha- and it had no genitals and it just was just a big mouth i guess that's kirby <laughs> <laughs> oh buddy okay what are we doing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I think we're gonna play D and D. Yeah. What's that? What's D and D? It's a role playing game that you can play with your friends, where you pretend to be like wizards and and warriors and stuff. There's 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 one man. It's Austin in this one. He tells everyone what the world is, and then we say what we're gonna do, and we roll dice, and the dice tell us did you do good or not. We tell a story and or troll Austin until he cries. That's me. I'm Austin. We should introduce ourselves. That's how this show begins in the new yeah. season, right? Oh, oh! Now, you, now you want structure? <laughs> yeah. Now you know what you're doing. No, I suffered a massive head injury, and I've lost all thoughts about Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know how it works anymore. You'll have to explain it to me. Oh, so we win always. If there's a thing that's difficult, and you're not sure if your character knows how to can do it or not, you roll a dice. The higher the number, up to like you know, usually twenty, maybe a bit above that if you've got modifiers. That's like you did really amazing, and it, you did great. If you get a one or hypothetically lower, oh, you really you really balls that up. And there's a sliding scale, so the the, the closer to one end or the other you are, yeah, you do better or worse. That tells you if you if you do a fireball good or jump over a cliff or seduce a slime or whatever, or seduce a fireball. Or... Yeah, you're gonna have to roll a really high number to seduce a fireball. No, not no. That's not where fire goes. There's there's Austin, he's over there, he's all the characters that aren't, like, the players, he's he's just everyone. <laughs> Austin is everyone! What a beautiful world that would be, nobody would be horny, everyone would just be reading ancient scrolls in an old monastery. Have we talked about his ancient scroll obsession on the podcast yet? Because <laughs> I, A world of Austin's just a way, like, I assume there was a Star Trek episode where they went to, like, the world of nerds, and that's basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. Do you explain your weird monk thing? Tell them about the scrolls. Okay, so Austin is like, oh no, I hate being horny. It's so terrible. And he always is like, I wish I could go live in a monastery and be a monk and just read ancient scrolls instead of having a penis. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what your end goal is there, my dude. Scrolls. Not really. All- <laughs> they're- the problem is they're ancient. You probably could do that. Take yeah. me, Conrad. Take me to the scrolls. <laughs> I, I'm sure you could find a monastery and become a monk. I don't know if you can touch ancient scrolls, though, and they, like, disintegrate. I feel like we've lost the plot of what we were doing, which is introducing ourselves. I'm Austin Yorsky. I'm the dungeon master, which means I am the narrator, and I play all the non-main characters of the story you're going to hear. Um, why do you care who Austin Yorsky is? Um, I used to do video game stuff, and then I went to law school, and now I'm doing this. My life is an absolute disaster. I disappeared for two months. Sure <laughs> Nobody did, knows though. where I went. And now I'm back. What's up? Hey, I'm also on this show, and I'm just going to jump in and introduce myself. My name's Laura. I I go by either Laura Kate Dale or Laura K. Buzz on the internet. Uh, I am one of the players, so I just play one character. We'll tell you about that in a minute when we get around to them. But 
I do video gamey things on the internet. I'm on like a bunch of podcasts. Uh, I I do a bunch of articles. I basically just talk about video games, and that is that that is what I do for a living. One of those podcasts I do with a guy called Comrade. Hey, Comrade. Uh- Oh, see, this is the thing, this is a trick that Laura does to try and, like, <laughs> propel things along, is it, she sort of hands things off uh, to, hi, I'm Conrad Zimmerman, um, I don't really know what I am anymore, uh, I, I just sort of call myself a mercenary creative because it's it sounds better to me than being a freelance slag. Um, I have written about video games for places. I do podcasts about all sorts of things, uh, video games and movies about video games, and also just tormenting a very poor, sweet man who lives in Boston and never asked for anything but friendship. Um, and yeah, that's you, that's you Twitch me. stream as well. You do oh, that. I, yeah, yeah, I do Twitch stream. Yeah, I Twitch. And you've stream. got badges and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I yeah, I make buttons. I make art, uh, and you could buy that art in the form of a, a badge or button, depending on whether you are European or American, respectively. Apparently, this is a thing I've learned, uh, which I sell those at pinfultruth.com. and and I also do audiobooks. I do a lot of stuff, a lot of little things. Little thing. Now, see, this is where you throw the ball to someone else. Oh, do Me! I have to? Oh, you see, now I have to inflict it on someone else. This is Me! the part I, I dread. This is why I, I always it. go last. But Lauren yeah. is eager. Hi, I'm here. My name is Lauren Morgan. Uh, I am uh, Dice Funk's uh, official trash baby. Uh, that's my position here. <laughs> um, I what makes it official? Did we vote? Uh, I voted and I won. So. <laughs> hey, hey, you get my vote. Thank you. Uh, I am the trashiest baby here, but <laughs> but I've been on this show for a long time. I'm also on a show called Humans Hollering at News. I even had I've had both Laura and Conrad on. It's a good so, show. You should listen to it. Yeah, if you want to hear positive things and really stupid jokes and stupid shit about Florida that no one cares about, because that's my that's what I do. You can check it out. Um. I also am a purveyor of lewds, and as somebody said on the Dice Funk Wiki, which I saw recently, uh, I quote, sell, v- pow- wait, sell pictures of my very powerful titties. <laughs> Fuck, you know, okay, I'm sorry. I know I know what you meant by lewds, but I'm old, and my first thought was they don't make those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> lewds and nudes. Um, yeah, so I scream on this show a lot. I scream on another show a lot. And he pictures of my titties. You can find me at Rogerlicious. It'll be somewhere written down, I'm sure. That's Chris! Hey there, champs! My name's Chris Valerius, and I'm another person on this show. I'm a professional fool that you could find online at RoloT on Twitter. You could also find the manga podcast I do at patreon.com slash weekly manga recap. I'm going to do the entire season in this voice now. Well, you, you'd better, because this is the bit where people get to recognize what your voice and name are together. So if you've introduced your name with this voice, you have to stick with it now. That's the ticket. So yeah, we're going to introduce ourselves at the beginning of the episodes for the beginning, because every season is somebody's first, and you got to get used to the voices so you can connect them to the things that are happening, although Chris does not vibe with that, apparently, so that's what he sounds like If if there's If there's a weird voice you don't recognize or that sounds like, ah, someone's doing a silly... That, that's Chris. Chris has many silly voices just ready to throw at the, Fucking... at the wall. Such a talent! Also, we do have credits at the end, but that's also just kind of like an improv space for me and Lauren to just kind of mm-hmm. explore the boundaries of the English language. Uh, just, uh, if you want to bother Austin, uh, join the Patreon and certain tier, you can change your name and he really loves it when I everyone don't. talks about his bussy. Do not talk about my bussy. Talk about his bussy. <laughs> talk about literally anything else at patreon.com slash Austin Yorsky. Also, all these links we're saying are in the descriptions of the episode. You can just click on them if you can't remember. Weekly Monger Recap or patreon.com slash Laura K. Buzz or all of Whatever. The... <laughs> Pinful Truth is what I was trying to say. Um, and then the nakedness. The, the sin. <laughs> is that what you're talking about me? Huh? The nakedness? Is that the me? sin. The sin? Oh, can I be the sin instead of the trash baby? I am the sin. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> Lauren is a giant fish that's also our dad. It's a Final Fantasy X joke, I'm sorry. I don't get that joke. I got it. Thanks, Chris. Wasn't funny, but I did get it. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see Neil banging out the tunes? Yeah. Lauren, you know that the audience can't see Neil banging out the tunes, right? Yeah, but they'll look it up now, and then they'll be like, wow, this is great content. It's there for mor- it's there for morale. My okay, so I'm trying to get Roll Twenty to work, which is the app we use for the to make the show happen, and it's not working for me, and that's frustrating enough. But also, my roommate used my computer as a joke, and he googled "Why is my penis itchy?" Uh, <laughs> which one? The audience is not going to care which of my roommates they don't know. I need to know though. Well, <laughs> you can discuss that off mic, Lauren. It's a no. show for the people. Yeah, they want to know who's. <laughs> Penis is itchy. (laughs) (laughs) Did you miss me, Austin? (laughs) So, Austin, Austin, tell us about this world that we're inhabiting. Oh yeah, we're doing a show here. (laughs) Is that how we do this? It's been so long since I did a first episode. I know we had to explain what Dungeons and Dragons is. It's a collaborative uh, role-playing game. At some point, we have to tell them what characters we're playing. But I imagine Mm -hmm. that we we establish the world before that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the the world will bring the characters out, as you will see momentarily. I just want to make sure, because like normally there's like a th- there's stuff we run through. Like we say, like our combat is heavily modified, so I cut out some boring stuff and I change the HP so it goes faster. That's one thing I say every season. What are the other things I say every we season? Should probably also say that we're going to throw out a lot of the rules if it fits the narrative purpose of the show. So if a spell doesn't do exactly as written in the book, don't worry about it. It was to make our show better. Or you're wrong. That's usually yeah. the other way it goes. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> uh, oh, we will forget a lot of shit that our characters can do sometimes. <laughs> this one's just you. You're it's so not, doing it. It is not. Oh, no, people it's, have it's, forgotten it's things. me too. Thank you, Laura. Uh, it's In not, fairness, it's, it is also me. <laughs> thank you, Conrad. It's because we are dumb. But in a good way. We're very smart, but we're also very stupid. <laughs> okay, this is all ass covering. I'm just saying, if you've never listened to a D&D podcast and someone's like, oh, you should check out Dice Funk. It's very yay and makes you think about stuff. And you check it out. What would you want to know before they start? I'd be kind of curious why they said stuff like that. Like, <laughs> Yeah, what is that? Imp- it sounded very erotic. Was it? Is it just pornography? No. No, it's mostly like imperialism and capitalism. Oh, okay. Well, they shouldn't say it so weird, then. It's gonna turn people off. <laughs> so, some explanation of what some, like, terms might mean if you hear them. Um, ability, ability scores are a thing. They're, like, how, uh, how good you are at a, a specific skill. You, you got some numbers, you add them to your dice rolls. Armor class, that's how hard it is to, to punch you. How, how sturdy are you to a punch? Um, what other ones are important? Uh, hit dice? Not really. They are. But they, <laughs> they, they are, but they aren't. Well, it's it's worth noting everyone in this uh this year uh season, whatever we call it, is playing a spellcaster. Uh, and spellcasters all have various things called spell slots. So you might refer to us saying, "Oh, my character is out of spell slots, or I can't cast anymore." Basically, spell slots are just the way the game gamifies having uh, the ability to cast magic. It's it's why you can't just do your your strongest spell over and over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, that's 4 <laughs> Got him. Yeah. Boom. What's what's the Venn diagram of people who need Dungeons and Dragons as a concept explained to them, but also get your particular quibbles with 4th edition? <laughs> uh, I bet there's like one dude. Shout out to dude, Jeff. Yeah, that <laughs> one dude was are. like, I feel vindicated. And he pushed up his glasses and then drank from his uh, deluxe size Slurpee. Oh, and Im- Slurpee. And immediately dropped dead because I yep, poisoned him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate Jeff. Um, all right. So I'm done talking. Someone else start the show. All right. Uh, so we're in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> what right. kind of cave? Is it wet? Is it damp? Is it moist? Is it dry? It's very moist because a big nerd named Austin is there. He's <laughs> drooling all over the place. Oh shit! Coming for him. How hard do you want to punch him? Uh, yeah. infinite Barely. hard. No, you can't you fight go. any. You can't fight any NPCs because roll twenty <laughs> isn't working for me. 
Are you an NPC, Austin? In this scenario, yeah. Are you the oh, human? Look, no, I think we're just going to your house. Oh, I I remembered a thing I usually say, which is every season is standalone, so you don't need to listen to previous seasons. Uh, there are like occasional callbacks or in jokes, but you'll be fine if you don't understand them. And we like we build on a timeline, but it's like Final Fantasy, where it's like, oh, there's always a person named Sid, but it doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, this this might be the season where Sid joins the party, but it doesn't matter because the next time you see him, you're like, oh, he doesn't want to go to the moon this time. It's yeah. fine. Twelve episodes in, we we might all go. <gasps> That's that person. And, you know, we, we, we got excited because we know what that means, but it, for everyone else, it's like, ah, it's a new character introduced to you. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's the thing I say every season. I knew there was more. There's going to be, like, one more, and I'll think of it ten minutes after we stop recording, and I'm, I'll just... Pull the audio from one of the prior seasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I just do that? Why do I, don't I think it's so difficult? Because you hate yourself? Is that related? Well, I mean, you would make more things difficult on yourself if you hate yourself because you're a masochist, maybe. Austin, tell us about the world <laughs> of Season 7 of, of Dice Funk. So, Season 7 is our post-apocalyptic season, which might sound like a downer, but hold on. Just stay with me for a second, because it's not that scary. Um, I was originally uh, using uh, kind of Adventure Time as a template, Um Spoilers, I guess, that Adventure Time is post-apocalyptic. That's not revealed until, like, season two, but whatever. Um, for the people in the setting, they don't think of it as post-apocalyptic. They just think of it as the world. It's the world they were born into and grew up in. Very few people have formal education, so they don't learn about, like, the old world or whatever. So there's not, like, this pervasive sense of, like, doom and loss. It's just, it's almost like a traditional D&D, where there are people just kind of living in um, medieval-ish uh, living conditions and then there's like ancient artifacts from the before times sometime except in our case these are artifacts from our older seasons and not just things that writers made up that are old as opposed to our last couple of seasons where they were like you know fridges and you know <laughs> elevators and d technology existed for a while yeah we had a spaceship season so yeah well, we've gone all the way back around to the beginning did we there's there's literally no way you don't know that. Huh. I should check the things out. I've been drinking a lot since the quarantine started, so that might have affected my past oh, from same. more than two months backwards. Um, so if you're a fan of D&D's lore, and I don't know why you would be, it seems like a terrible way to use the hours God gave you on this earth <laughs> to read old books about dragons and shit but um there have been a number of post-apocalyptic D, D settings over the years most notably dark sun which is extremely dark and gritty uh we're not taking too much inspiration from that just like a couple nods here and there there's also mistara there are some capcom games about it that's all you need to know <laughs> if either of them beat them ups it's fine um and then fourth edition has this setting called uh, sometimes the points of light or the Nentir Veil, because they love making up words, uh, also has a kind of post-apocalyptic flavor. Um, why am I telling you this? Good question. Did you also have an answer for it? Uh, no, that was the end of that sentence. It was a good question. Well, that's good. All right. That's good. I guess we'll find out. Um, oh, I, have to use ah, I guess we'll find out. And then I shuffle my mustache a God, little bit. God, that's so good. So I think the the first shot of this uh, HBO series that this will be adapted into someday, and I've, I'm just going to keep putting that energy out into the universe until it reaches the appropriate people. The first shot is descending down over a barren landscape, uh, specifically a salt flat, because this season setting is a great salt flat that used to be uh, an entire ocean before the apocalyptic event happened. Um, we, out of character, know what the event was. In character, nobody knows or cares really much what happened. Um, you can ask if you want. I don't think you're going to run into anyone who knows. But if you want to know, that's that's uh, information's out there in previous seasons. Um, I was expecting somebody to interrupt me with a joke. It's weird that Chris didn't interrupt me. That's like part of my natural speaking rhythm now is the part I'm where... trying to help you, okay? Uh -huh. Like I can't make a joke at every moment or the show goes nowhere, you know? I pick and choose. Okay. I'm like Tyson in that 
I delicately <laughs> punched me in spots, the mouth, <laughs> which is a bad example because I believe Tyson was almost exclusively known for throwing haymakers and wild punches. The point still and, stands. And fighting and someone's rape. Yeah, Whoa, yeah and Chris, rape. really the worst comparison you could have made, bud. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. I don't give up. Uh, like John Cena. <laughs> oh, John Cena. Uh, no, nice, like Mike right? Tyson. I never give up. Oh. I'm like Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm very funny. <laughs> uh, no. Um, I don't know. Cut that, that out, you monster. <laughs> I don't know. We're, I'm going to have to release like seven bonus episodes that are just outtakes. Like, no, I was saying, none of, none of this podcast is usable thus far. <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm going to put it in a super cut just called Austin Loses His Mind and upload Dude, it Dude, you should feed. make that. Put that behind a paywall. Make that bank. They would love that. <laughs> yeah, I got to give some skloozies. <laughs> <laughs> skloozies? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Exclusive. Skloozies. Yeah, yeah, no, I that. understood it. What? <laughs> yeah, I knew what you meant. Mm-hmm. Where did you hear that word, Austin? <laughs> That's uh, in the video game industry, absolutely. Oh, really? The Xbox has the hottest new skloozies. <laughs> it sounds bad. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, no, I'll, I'll back you up on that, Austin. Yes, as someone who talks about video games all the time, they, yeah, they talk about skloozies all the time. It doesn't make the words sound better. <laughs> we gotta stop talking about this because if it starts connecting and doing a coherent conversation, I have to leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> if one of us fucks up, I can just cut it out. But once it becomes a thing, it has to stay because we'll reference it later. All right. Skloozies, skloozies, skloozies. <laughs> Please stop saying skloozies. Skloozies <laughs> is going to become the brand name of something or the name of a restaurant or something. <laughs> That's going to happen. You'll have cut this. It sounds nasty. <laughs> wow. It sounds like something nasty. Hey, Austin. Yeah. What's the name of this world? <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> so the, the, the name of the season is Avalone. A V E L L O N E. That's the bottle that Liam Neeson's penis size was compared to, I believe. What? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Are you th- okay? You can't bring it's that, actually, Chris. It's, it's, Aval- it's Avalon, actually, but still. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta give the audience like even ten seconds to absorb that before you make a connection that they can't ever shake for the enti- for the brand of, that we're sticking with for the next nine if months. I recall <laughs> Janice Dickinson in her book said she saw Liam Neeson's penis and compared it to the size of an avion. Wait, ball. have you read Janice Dickinson's book? No, I listened to somebody who had read Janice Dickinson's book. <laughs> and it was shared to me. Who? She's terrible. I don't want to read that book. We need to get Willem Dafoe and Liam Neeson and uh, fuck the guy from who plays Magneto in the X Men movies in a room together. Ian McKellen. Uh, no, the, the other one, Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. Oh yeah, he's got a big dick. Oh yeah. Those three need yeah. to star in like a fucking heist Ooh, movie. Can we get the guy who plays uh, uh, the, the Watchmen, uh, the, the uh, Doctor Manhattan in the Watchmen? Doctor Man, his show? penis is in magnificent. Yes. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I had to get that out. <laughs> well, they just call it the cock crew, and they, they just pull off of heists, and it has nothing to do with the fact that they're all very hung. It's just something yeah. that's is unsaid. It's what subtext. What's their, like, power move? Is their dicks were just always out? <laughs> <laughs> the people be too busy looking at the dicks, and they'd be like, we can steal all we want. Yeah, they're like, put the money in the bag, and they're just flopping all around. <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> well, they all, they all met shopping for underwear. <laughs> they all go to a specialty shop that provides underwear specifically for men of their great length. <laughs> all right, let's role play this conversation out. Who wants to be Liam Neeson? I've got a good Michael Fassbender. We're throwing out the other season seven we had in mind. Now you four are going to play. Okay, let's, who takes everyone claim? I want to be Liam Neeson. Okay, Chris is Liam Neeson. Who wants to be Willem Dafoe? I want to be Willem Dafoe. <laughs> This is, no, we have to stop because this is going to become real. We can't joke about this. What, wait, what do we say? Cock something? Cock Austin, crew? this is set in Avalone. Tell us about Avalone. This is where all the big dicks are. It's a huge post-apocalyptic salt flat. And I can't, I'm just going to keep talking. We just have to move through it. Um, that the, This camera's panning over and you see that all throughout the salt flat are the ruins of the old world. So you see like uh, buildings from what would be like a very modern time period, like glass and steel, very cyberpunk, uh, you know, shadow run style buildings. You see uh, like, yes, down spaceships from our spaceship season. You see 
the ruins of malls and suburbs, but they're all like scattered about like someone took their Lego set and dumped it into a sandbox. This season's going to be almost like a classic kind of RPG adventure. We usually do like weirdly experimental ones where we spend a lot of time walking around being like, what is good and evil? <laughs> Why am I so sad? <laughs> this time we're going to mostly go on like a Lord of the Rings style quest across this great landscape. And so in that way, it's 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 much more traditional. I have a map, but you, the players, won't get to see it until the until the characters find mm. it in world. I want it now. I want it now. Another good way to think of the season would be like Breath of the Wild, which is also post-apocalyptic, even though it doesn't feel like it a lot of times because you're just like I'm walking around in this landscape, everything's cool, making making notes on my map. Okay, so Lauren, what you're saying is like me playing 150 hours to try and feed all the dogs. Mm-hmm. Feed all the dogs in Breath of the Wild. They'll give you treasure. Um, <laughs> it's true. They'll give you treasure. I wish I liked any video game as much as you like Breath of the Wild. It's very fun. I get to feed the dogs and they give me their treasure. <laughs> and if you wear the little monster mask, and actually that kind of ruined it for me because you wear the little monster mask and you sneak up on the monsters, they get so excited and happy. And then I just like turn around and leave because I can't kill them anymore. So Lauren, were you going to be a uh, fast bender? In the cock crew? Um, I don't know how to do a fastbender voice, but I feel like I might have some of the biggest dick energy on the show, so. Mm-hmm. Who was the fourth one? Uh, the, the Watchman, the guy from Watchmen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy who plays Dr. Manhattan. He has the most magnificent penis of them all, so Conrad should be honored. Well, um, I don't <laughs> know if I've ever audibly heard my jaw hit the floor before <laughs> then when he shows up in one scene nude and i was like my god that is a magnificent penis <laughs> it's gonna be very hard to decide if this episode's gonna be called cock crew or <laughs> scloozies <laughs> so, like some Scloozies. combination of the two probably Cock-scloozies. okay now you see you're just a, you're no. just reinforcing those ideas having to wind up in the edit don't do it to yourself austin uh, consider an only fans exclusive a cox gloozy. Oh, wait, should we start uploading Dice Funk to OnlyFans? <laughs> um, I need to. I need to make one. I need money. <laughs> uh, would you call everything Scloozies? Yeah, well, that's, that'll be Dice Funk Scloozies, and then that'll be the Cock Crew season, where you foreplay the people famous for having large genitalia, and we just foreplay. <laughs> So this is going to be uh, more like a traditional RPG, open world. No, we'll introduce the characters around episode four, I think. <laughs> <at this rate>. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had Scloozies, we talked about Cox, Austin had to go steal a chair. <laughs> they won't hear, the audience won't hear the chair theft. That's, that's no, for us. No, you should leave it in, they'd love you. Salt flats, ruins of the old world, we're going on traditional quests. Correct. Uh, so the the location the camera finally gets to is going to be a large stadium. Uh, to us, it's clear that it's a it's basically like a football stadium, a baseball stadium, a soccer stadium, like a one that to us is very recognizable. But to the people in the universe, is just some old ancient building whose whose original purpose has been lost. In fact, I bet it's a rally ball stadium, which is a sport that Chris invented previously. So we'll keep that within our lore. It's an enormous uh, rally ball stadium. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant you a lover. sound like such a cute elephant i'm sorry about being an elephant no it's really cute it's like there's a tiny elephant uh, so now chris is giving us links fuck it we're just embracing the chaos this is just <laughs> no i just i need to do it while it was still in my mind i wanted to prove i'm not insane yeah to stick it evian you got avalon from evian <laughs> so there's a rally ball court uh, yeah what's a rally ball court It's a stadium. It's a full... It's very important that you understand this is a huge Coliseum-like stadium. Um, What is the uh, the Avalon's old sports team? Obviously, they haven't played here in centuries, but, like, there's a big sign out front. It probably says, like... Avalon Abalone. (laughs) The Bucks. Abalone. So it would be the Avalon Abalone? Yes! Do you want to tell the audience what Abalone are? It's a shell guy. Hold on. I can't remember which kind of shell dude it is. That's what... Uh, fuck, I just wrote the names of things that lives in shells. Shellfish. Yeah. Oh my god. I was, <laughs> I was, you were very close to what I was going to suggest, which was the Avalone Balonies, and it's just a bunch of people dressed up in, like, hot dog costumes, like, oh, look at me, I'm a, I'm yeah. a, I'm a baloney. They're, 
they're they're like little guys. They're like a uh, little. They're like clams or oysters or. Yeah, they're clammy but weirder looking. Okay, I love that too because that means somewhere in this uh, post-apocalyptic building, there's an old uh, mascot costume of like a giant clam man. <laughs> I'm here for that. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm trying to. I bet people think now that it's like a religious icon. <laughs> They're like, yes, the people who lived here prayed to the giant clam man. Oh, it's very funny because it's. They it must have been like rich people because apparently they're very expensive. Abalone. Yeah. Wait, how much? How much does it cost? Now I'm. Now I want to eat an abalone. Wild abalone can run as high as five hundred dollars per kilo. Uh, a single, a single abalone, like just just one, could cost you twenty four dollars. Yeah, the meat can be uh for US forty dollars per kilogram. Uh, and then you can still also do the shells, which are even more expensive. So, I like this. This is unintentionally tied into a theme here because you're about to find out what this building is being used for. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which is to host gladiatorial combat where prisoners and the poor are for- forced to fight uh, for the amusement of the upper class in the stands. So we have, we've already found a theme. I'm, I'm so excited to be back, folks. <laughs> I love <laughs> symbolism. I'm horny for these motifs. It can't get any better than this. Yay. <laughs> Uh, so how I want uh, the players to introduce their characters is uh, do it. So explain what your character is and so forth. But take take into account that in universe, what's happening is you're being uh, introduced to the crowd as you are being pushed out uh, in, uh, onto the field to fight for your life. So that is kind of the vibe that's happening right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> this no, season. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't want me to talk. I was just gonna say it doesn't make sense for your character to explain in the voice who they are, but that's I guess, true. Okay, I'll I guess there. it could. Do you want to do that? Do you want to be like, uh, like there's a okay? Yes, I love this. A- <laughs> They're like they send me out, and I'm like, hello, I'm Lola B. <laughs> yeah, so there's a man dressed as an abalone. He's in the abalone mascot costume, which they found. Are like, oh yes, the ceremonial garb of the executioners of the old world. And so he has a huge bloody axe, and he like leads you out into the field. And he's like, condemned. Explain your your sentence to the crowd so that they might enjoy your suffering. <laughs> So I would like my entrance to be, if possible, mm-hmm. uh, you just see a porcupine walking out, right? Mm-hmm. And then I, I, I was, an, I was attached to his belly, like a baby <laughs> possum. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have gone first because your vibe is so f- completely different than what I was trying to set up. It's good, but <laughs> <laughs> you just came out with some fucking wild <laughs> shit. You heard what you said, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, why have a giant? Salty porcupine as your companion if you can't ride his belly. Okay, so, yep, tell everybody what's going on with those words you just said. <laughs> okay, so my character's name is Lola Beans. Uh, <laughs> so I just like saying it. I make kobold, uh, stylized as a gulf sand gecko. What's um, a kobold? A kobold is like a tiny lizard person. How is that There's... different from lizard folk and dragonborn, which are D&D things? Because they're smaller and less cool, right? Yeah, basically. Kobolds are famously like the weakest enemy. They're like the Goombas of D&D. They're sad little babies. Um, and they're like cowardly and small and weak. Um, I just want to say, because I don't think you post the <laughs> the character sheets anymore, but I just wanted everyone to fully appreciate the comedy I put in mine, or the player name is that bitch. And experience <laughs> points, it says all of them. <laughs> the, so. the character sheets will be posted on patreon.com slash Ski as well as wherever you all want to post them if you want to. Oh, so yeah, um, usually they go up a little Might bit after. On Pornhub. <laughs> no, just type, uh, just type Dice Funk into Pornhub. Hey, It'll hey, come up. I could post them on Pornhub. I have a verified Pornhub account. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to find. <laughs> I was trying to find your podcast you do with Mar- uh, Mari because yeah. uh, she was on a one shot, and I was like, "Holy shit, this lady has incredible energy! I need to listen to her podcast." So I searched for it, and it's not under the name you say Pixel Square all the time. It's on her other. Uh, sh- What's it called? Like the feed. It's on. Um. Oh, uh, Geek Remix. Yes, exactly. So I was yeah. trying to find that. And anyway, so it's also on Pornhub. Is the thing I discovered. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's where we get most of our like clicks. Um, we average something like ninety thousand down, uh, like views an episode on Pornhub. Like Pornhub is the only place people care about that show. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, it's another thing you can find lore on. Sorry we interrupted you, Lauren. I just wanted the audience to know what kobolds were because that's that word has a bunch of different meanings depending on the mythology and the addition of D&D and all kinds of other stuff. It's okay. I understand because I wouldn't have said the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm a ranger. We're level three. My background is a master thief. So like Lola likes to steal things um, and she's not good at it. But she gets a pass because she's really cute. What what kind of ranger are you? Uh, the kind is it Beastmaster. Is that what it's called? No, oh, you're using oh. the Unearthed Arcana variant ranger. The thing that Austin does. Say. Oh, gee, Bill. <laughs> I forgot. It. Where have you been for two months? I did it in the episodes mostly. <laughs> okay, but what is it again? Tell me. <laughs> the Unearthed Arcana <laughs> ranger. Yeah, uh, that thing that everybody just said, Unearthed Arcana. I said it too now. Because um, that means things. Okay, so the the ranger is famously a terrible class in 5th edition, and the Beastmaster version even more so. In the first season when I was a player, I took levels in it as a joke uh, for the comedic uh, potential of doing such a bad class. Uh, and since then, um, they're, they've released, not in the official book form, but online in PDFs, a version that kind of fixes some of the stuff. The, the, the only thing you as the audience really need to know is that if her ranger animal companion dies, she can do a ritual to bring it back. That's the important thing. Before, if your animal died, you were just fucked. Um, yeah, Austin, you could never do that because like, the moment my animal died, I would like... Quit, yeah. No, I wouldn't quit. No, no, no. I would come, uh, I would come on and record every week just sobbing incoherently. Yeah, it's a pre- it would be a pretty dick move if the DM killed your ranger animal companion off screen. I'm not. Yeah, we all know. Maybe <laughs> I know. I remember. <laughs> I remember. But so, so the lore of uh, your your ranger is that you and your animal companion are spiritually bonded, and if it is slain in battle, you can use your uh, spiritual bond to revive it. You don't even need its body; it can be incinerated down to the last atom, and you can literally just through the power of love bring him back. That'd be very rude, though. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, that's what's important right now, I feel like. Uh, so, Lola Beans, Kobold Ranger, what about your alignment? Ah, I forgot the alignment. I am chaotic neutral, because I can. Uh, almost all <laughs> rangers are. That's just, like, I do what I want because of the forest. Even if I wanted to be, like, a, a lawful thing, I don't think I could stay true to it. In character, because I'm a being of pure chaos. So you were brought out to fight in the gladiatorial arena. Why? <laughs> uh, for stealing the king's meats. But not meats. Game. Game. Uh, took, a, took a Stuart. <laughs> What's a Stuart? A uh, Stuart is my giant porcupine. Uh, uh, slash salt pine because they don't actually live in salt flats. So he's a, he's a fake one. He's a, he's a real porcupine in the game, but he's covered in salt. Uh huh. And he's the size of a pony. This is a game that has like dragons and elves and shit. It's okay if you have a porcupine that lives in the wrong climate. <laughs> I know, but I wanted to have some like flair. So he's yeah. salty. <laughs> he's very salty. You have some popcorn, just like take a quill and <laughs> dust it out over the popcorn. Is that also his personality? Is he very salty? Uh, with everybody but me. Yes, I decided just now. Okay. So to recap, you came out, uh, the, the porcupine walked into the, the stadium or like walked out of the tunnel that leads of like, uh, under the, the bleachers, under the stands. And it was just a giant pony sized porcupine and you were clinging to its belly. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. And so the, the person who's in the abalone costume tells you to explain your crimes to the audience, and you say you were trespassing in the, the god king's uh, sacred lands, and you uh, spiritually bonded with one of his animals. And I pet too many of the rabbits. Which is, of course, a capital crime. It is. Rich people hate it when you pet their rabbits. All right, who wants to go next? Um, I guess I'll go next. I would like that. I would enjoy that, Conrad. Would you enjoy that? You would like that? Then don't do it. So wait, because you'll make him mad. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doming me on my show, Lauren. <laughs> Is that what I'm doing? You're, you're like, make him wait. Make him beg for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, uh, my character is, um, is named Brother Corton. Um, and he's wearing a rather loose fitting robe with a, a hood. And he is a mull, which is a sort of it's a human dwarf hybrid that uh, appears in Dark Sun specifically. Yeah, the spelling of Corton will be in the d- episode description every week in case you're tripping about that, my friends. Yeah, it's, it's K H O R T O N. Um, and he is muscular. He's about six foot two. He is, um, what's the word? Yummy. <laughs> Do we want to talk about moles in, in Dark Sun? Because, like, one of the dark, gritty, edgelord, try hard things about Dark Sun yeah. is that, like, everything is, like, super shitty and bad all the time, and moles right. are, like, the slave race. But you, you've kind of. Almost like reclaimed them as being like super hot and sexy and cool. Yeah, I want I want uh, Brother Corton to be hot and sexy and and cool. Um, he is a former slave because I was sort of operating off of a dark sunny type background uh, inspiration. Um, who he grew up on a, a what, what did I how did I phrase it? Uh, an iron mine. Yeah, he was he was. Uh, Grew up as a slave for a family operating an iron mine. Seemed to have a gift for healing and helped out the slaves that would get injuries in the mine. Um, Then, you know, wound up getting into a relationship with the iron mine owner's wife and uh, learned to read. A lot of real benefits uh, there and uh, learned to make sweet, sweet love. (laughs) <laughs> somehow we've already called back to the cock crew because this guy's absolutely on the fucking team yeah oh yeah he definitely is definitely is um and uh eventually he gets an opportunity to get his freedom um when the mine owner's son gets ill and so he heals the child and the child on the mend and he gets his freedom and he gets the fuck out because he's pretty sure that kid's gonna die and he's gonna be chased down and so his new plan is to find a way to build a group of people a community to defend him from them and then maybe go back and liberate his slave brethren so that's his deal I assume he's here because he slept with someone's wife (laughs) <laughs> it's either that or i think we we talked a little briefly about this before about your kind of vibe as a uh let's say spiritual advisor yeah, uh, yeah. Wh- which in in the kingdom of the god king is blasphemy a, a crime punishable by whatever the god king desires such as having you fight in the coliseum yeah that's not great either so you could have absolutely like fucked someone you shouldn't have, or you could just you know be in trouble because you're trying to f- to free the love too much. Yeah, that is what is happening. He's he's trying to, um... or it could be both. Why why limit? Uh, yeah, I mean you know he might have been trying to get a follower. Uh, he is very charming. <laughs> So, Corton the Mole, M-U-L, that's a half-human, half-dwarf. And what's your class and alignment? He is a bard uh, with a storyteller background, uh, lawful neutral. And uh, let's see here. High charisma, as you might expect. Um, Good at uh, persuasion, uh, if you know what I mean. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, he has mage hand, obviously, because God damn it! <laughs> obviously, <laughs> also message because, well, you know. <laughs> um, but he he has um some you know he he has some skills relative relevant to um relationships and communication for the most part, and he does have cure wounds um. But he's mostly a talker. 
Last season, I had to ask Conrad to tone down his extremely dark character. In this season, I'm probably gonna ask him to ask him to tone down his extremely fucking pornographic character. I just had on my mind a great idea. So I was thinking about the cock crew again, right? Of we aren't we all? Uh, I just thought of what their like theme song could be. <laughs> it's Cigaro by System of a Down, right? 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 <laughs> right? Okay. Thank you. I need to be I need to be very clear with something by the way. I feel like I wasn't I'm referring to the Dr. Manhattan from the HBO show. Yes, not yes, the Zack obviously. Snyder. But, okay, I just I need to get that out there. I don't want anyone thinking that weak shit penis <laughs> from the movie <laughs> is what was my like <laughs> divine sign. No, it was the one from the oh fucking my God. show. <laughs> Chris has very high penis standards. I saw God in that uncuck fucking ham. Did I just hear the word cuck? I think he's trying to say uncut, but he said cuck. Cuck ham. I don't believe so. I don't think I've ever said the word cuck before. You did. I heard it. All right. So, Corton. <laughs> Corton. Corton? Corton. Corton, the mole bard, very sexy, uh, got in trouble for doing too much sexy stuff. <laughs> He was proselytizing. He was proselytizing himself on the streets, if you know what I mean. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right, Laura, save us. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, this season I'm playing Vindras, who is a level three cleric and a Thrykreen, which are the sort of insectoid class that, that are a thing this season. They're, they're just armoured bug people. I don't know how better to explain them. <laughs> Yeah, if Thrykreen is too hard to say, because it is, uh, Mantis folk also works. They're basically uh, yeah. anthropomorphic Mantis people. Yeah. So in terms of my build, um, I I do lots of healing, and I have very strong armor class. So I'm very hard to hit, and I do lots of healing up. I think you might actually be, even at level three, the most armored character in Dice Funk history. And we've had like level 15 characters before. Your, your yeah. AC is out of control. My AC is 20, so I'm real hard to hit. Basically, because I, I am a Thrykreen, I get this thing where I, I get advantage. We didn't explain what advantage is. Advantage is if you roll, <laughs> you roll the dice, you roll the dice twice, you take the better of the two numbers. Disadvantage is the opposite of that. I get advantage when sneaking, because I'm a sneaky chameleon that can camouflage myself, but really strong armor takes away stealth advantage, so it's fine, it balances out. I, I got to wear really heavy armor, and I'm, I'm all good. I can do spells with my little like vestigial extra hands while holding my equipment, so that's a cool thing I can do. Yeah, you have six limbs, two legs, two regular arms, and then two smaller manted arms, which can't hold normal weapons, but you can like do yeah. other stuff with them. Yeah, uh, I, I am a cleric of the life domain, which is the, the healing-centric one. Um, <laughs> Took seven seasons to get a proper healer. Dice fun. Yeah, <laughs> the, my, my character is very, very, very much built on the healer domain. Uh, in terms of where she thinks her powers come from, She's convinced that Brother Corton is where where those powers come from. She's she 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 met Brother Corton shortly before. Oh, look, I can do all sorts of healing magic. It must have come from you, oh wonderful, oh wonderful brother. Well, you know, opening yourself up to love has opened yourself up to greatness. Yeah. So, uh, v Vindras is. I I think when this this season starts. She's very much. She's here because of of whatever nonsense Brother Corton got into. Whatever whatever got you into into being here, Vindras was on the sidelines. Like, yes, no, he's holding what? the camera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she's she's there to heal up your wounds if it got a bit intense. <laughs> uh, yeah, so she's 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 there fully on board with his free love message and convinced that he is the reason that she can now do miraculous healing. 
so this is the most important pre-existing character uh, player character relationship yeah. going in is you're basically a member of his sex cult which is yeah. not how i thought this would be when i was like <laughs> yes post-apocalyptic season dark and gritty no this is gonna be weird <laughs> I, I, this is when i knew it was not gonna be your average uh genre exercise but you so do you want to uh, be specific about your like mantis appearance because the the one in the book is like very uh plain but you can you can go pretty wild with it like you however you want them to look um i i i like to picture that um i don't think she's dressed like your sort of traditional view of a cleric the sort of like nunly robes etc because you know that's that's not the kind of cleric you get in a sex cult um <laughs> i i i think i think she is more the the look of punk rocker at a fetish club <laughs> oh okay i did not see that coming um, I was gonna say yeah. because uh, because this is post apocalyptic, uh, metal is hard to come by. So you're not in like traditional heavy armor the way that you might picture it in D and D. So yeah, I want to give it like some kind of extra flavor. So like, so a- yeah, no no metal st- no metal studs on the like leather jackets or anything. But like, yeah, I I I think she's I think she's got leather jacket. I think she's got some like torn torn jeans. She she's going for 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 punk chic. <laughs> so she's cool, is what you're saying? Uh... I don't think she's nearly as cool as she thinks she is, but she wants to project that she's cool. She's like, eh, is it, I'm, I'm, def- I'm definitely cool. I'm cool enough to be in a sex cult. <laughs> <laughs> so when you think of healers in most video games and RPGs and stuff, you think of very fragile characters like white mages and Final Fantasy, but yeah. clerics in D&D are actually really, really tanky. They're like a frontline class. So you, yeah. you're, you're extremely fucking strong. Yeah, I've I've got a few things that can do like magical magical damage, but largely it's hit things with a big he- with a with a mace, and heal up absolutely everything. I do have a spiritual we- a spiritual weapon though, so that's cool. So Vindros, once again spelling in the description, the Thrycreen or Mantis folk cleric. Uh, alignment or any other details you want to throw out there? Uh, alignment. I've put chaotic neutral. Um. She is a healer, and that is very much a thing that she she prides herself in, but she's not going to be like, ah, I must heal every single person I meet on my adventure. It's much more, um, you know, I mean, if we like you, you get healed. (laughs) And so you are, you're officially, we're, we're, we're putting this into stone. You were picked up as part of the, uh, blasphemy, uh, investigation that the God King did on Corton, and you were a part of that. Yeah, whatever Corton was up to, Vindras was just on the sidelines trying to trying to help ensure that happened. Because and any anything for for Brother Corton. I also think part of that probably has to do with the fact that you are an insect person, which is yeah. not a, a favored social group to be a part of in the God yeah. King's kingdom and his domain. So if if you were a human, you probably could have gotten off without being. Th- forced to fight for your life but being an insect folk they just threw the book at you well i mean even if they hadn't thrown the book where where am i gonna be other than a brother caught on side <laughs> oh god okay <laughs> austin didn't know he's getting himself into <laughs> uh, here's the thing it's one thing to read when laura sends a message that says i'm gonna be in conrad's sex cult <laughs> In my mind, I think, okay, it can't be that weird. Surely they'll pull it back a little bit. Um, and I was lying to myself so I could sleep. We'll, but see, here we are. we'll see where it goes over time. <laughs> but yeah, we are both capable of committing to the bit, Austin. You should know that by now. Yeah, we've we've had an extra month to really solidify in our minds we're committing to this bit. <laughs> I absolutely know Conrad will. It's one of the things I admire most about him is that he absolutely will go through with it no matter what people say. It is terrifying and also very impressive. Uh, after, after the last few seasons, I am committing to a stupid fucking bit. <laughs> Um, You may notice that I'm not asking Chris to introduce his character because his character is not here right now. I'm actually not playing a character this season. That's right. I'm going to be in the background floating like a ghost here to make jabs and jars and barbs throughout the entirety of this season. Is that that different to past seasons, Chris? Damn. (laughs) Oh, it just means I don't have to roll the dice at any point. Chris is playing the weather. How is it, Chris? Yeah. (laughs) 
sexy, apparently. He's still going to make the audience cry by the end of it. That's yeah. the worst thing. I know, bit. it's ridiculous. Your fucking talent, man. And then it started raining. <laughs> <laughs> he did it again. No, that's the thing, Austin. <laughs> it can't rain anymore. Oh, fuck. It oh. can't. <laughs> Roll initiative. Really? Yep. How about... No, though. Lola Beans, the Kobold Ranger, Brother Corton, the Mole Bard, and Vindros, the Thrykreen Cleric, are fighting in the arena for the enjoyment of the God King's favored citizens. Uh, six. I got a 14. I also got a six. I got a seven. I just wanted to be included. Nice. <laughs> uh, so whoever has the higher dexterity bonus goes. I can't see the roll 20. Uh, so you just honor system, I guess. I have a negative dexterity. Oh, oh wow. Corton is all muscle, no flex. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, he he can't do the acrobatic sex shit, but he, he can hold you up off the ground, which is very hot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a nasty season so it, early. His endurance is off the chart. That He's got a plus three the, constitution. The stamina. Yep, so this combat's on you. Lauren, you're up first. I'm going to stop talking. This is a fight between the three of you as the audience roars. And you see up in the press box where when this was a rally ball stadium, like the announcers sat, there's the dark shadow of the God King watching over this fight. You can't see him. I'm going to cast. Lola's going to cast. Fog Cloud. Because uh, she doesn't really want to fight. Uh, so I create a 20 foot radius sphere of fog centered on a point. I'll put it in the middle of the guy, the arena. Um, and so <laughs> the whole area will become heavily obscured and you guys can't see me. All right. So that's your action. Um, the, for the audience, you'll, you'll learn very quickly how D and D combat works, which is it goes on forever. There are moves, actions, bonus actions, and reactions. Um, the important thing is that, uh, you cannot do more than one of those usually. So you, right now is your action. You create this fog cloud and then, um, Stuart, the salt porcupine actually gets a separate turn. So just do your weapon attack for that, Lauren. Okay. Uh, with my heck bow. You gotta explain what that is to the audience. Oh, that's true. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm a crossbow user, um, I don't know if any of y'all have been on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you mess with the gecko, you, you, you get the hecko. Oh, I'm a gecko, so I named my bow the heck bow because I'm, I'm five. Uh, so <laughs> what does the heck bow use as ammunition? Stewart's quills! Because they're free. I rolled a nine. Okay, so you miss. Well, he's a, he's a porcupine. And I was busy making fog, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. So for from Cor- Corton and Vindros' perspective, suddenly a, a, a cloud of mist descends on the arena, and then just a quill goes flying through the air, and it's nowhere near <laughs> you. Salt sprinkling from it as it flies. <laughs> making everything delicious as it goes. All right, whoever's up next. Um, I guess that Laura. Uh, yep. Yes. Um, so to start my turn, Vindras is going to use a bonus action to cast Spiritual Weapon, uh, in which I can make a magical floaty weapon that I can do attacks with. Um, I'm going to make a Spectral Whip. Uh, oh no. And then... <laughs> oh god. Are you, sure you, uh, are you sure you want the mace to be your primary weapon and not a switch? I <laughs> see what you did there, friend. Um, You didn't answer the question. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, hey, we can make that decision when it comes to my melee weapon. My holy riding crop. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then as my my main action for the turn, uh, I'm going to... Actually, no. uh, You can only do one bonus action in a turn, can't you? Correct. Uh, Okay. Mm. Okay, I'll have to do that next turn then. Um... I'm going to attempt to attack using my spiritual weapon into the into the into the cloud. Spiritual weapon. You create a flo- floating spectral weapon within range that lasts for the duration until the spell is cast again. When you cast a spell, you can make a melee attack against a creature within five feet of the weapon. 
Uh, so how I, how big is this cloud? Can I run towards this cloud to try and do a big whip in there? Yeah, so uh, you won't be able to see, so you'll get disadvantage, but you can just run into the cloud and summon it and try to hit. Uh, uh, I get disadvantage, did you say? Mm, that's not going to go well. Uh, eight. Is eight going to hit you? No. Not even close, huh? Fine. <laughs> Is she created a... Okay. It's fine, I'll get you next time. Uh, no, no shooting. There's a porcupine in here. Precious cargo. Okay, then why don't you come out of there and I'll fight you away from the porcupine? I'm also precious cargo. I'm not so sure. Because if you don't come out, I'm going to whip everywhere. And if I hit if I hit the porcupine, I hit the porcupine. That feels very rude and uh, bad. So please don't. Then come out the cloud. Why would I do that? You're going to shoot me. Well, I mean, it mean we could see your pretty face. <laughs> don't patronize me. No, hold, hold on, hey. hold on, hold <laughs> on. Oh no, that's a very sultry voice. Conrad has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> now we all need to just take a deep breath. I, the fog's not going to hurt us if we take a deep breath, is it? No. Okay, we all it's just normal just fog. Need to take deep breath because from where I'm sitting right now, there's only going to be one winner in this whole situation. I was I was picturing something like the end of the um the Hunger Games, where the the, the fact that we both win, but we're in that we 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 are us. And you're you're just gonna just say in go. love. You're <laughs> gonna say the fact that we're in love. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> What's the Hunger Games? I, I do want to jump in here and say that uh, actually a thing that it, about gladiatorial combat is that it's almost never to the death in real life history because it's very expensive to buy slaves and to train them and to feed them and to clothe them. You're uh, actually a very... Oh, I just thought this was an execution method, not... Sometimes, know. sometimes it is, but uh, it's actually relatively rare for gladiators to fight to the death. Uh, you usually that means you pissed somebody off, or you got old, or uh, the attendance was down, or something. There, are, I mean, there are gladiatorial fights to the death, but you don't assume that's what's happening right now. Well, uh, my 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 assumption, brother, had been that we would, you know, win as a double act somehow, and you know, I I, I assumed if we if we dealt with. If we dealt with that one, we'd be fine. Okay, well, well that's... I have a name. Oh, and... and well, I'm sorry, I'm so bad at names. I'm much better at faces. <laughs> and bodies. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was just thinking about... Yeah. <laughs> the bodies. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I never forget an ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know you don't. <laughs> I didn't like your tone there. <laughs> uh, well, my name's Lola, and this is Stuart, and we're the Beanses. All right, Lola Stewart. I think we can both agree that we don't want anybody here to get seriously injured in any of this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a real good show of it until, you know, as soon as this fog wears off and they can see us again, we're going to make a real good show of this, okay? Hey, hey, uh. just, 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 just as a show of faith, um, when my t run turn rolls around, I'm going to sneakily, um, buff your AC up. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll make you a little beefier. Oh, it's going to look very convincing because I'm going to go down in what? about, uh... <laughs> two three minutes that should be long enough so from the audience's perspective lola dropped a cloud vindross ran into it and there's like a spiritual weapon flying around in there like you know making a vortex in the cloud and then corton's just standing outside just talking to the cloud yeah and they can't <laughs> hear over like the roar of the crowd and now they're just throwing stuff there's like we want to see some action get out of the cloud you wuss yeah corton's gonna run into the fog with his sword just to make it seem like something's happening. <laughs> okay, this is interesting, because I, I was like, okay, we'll start with the combat scene so everyone can show off their abilities. And the first thing they do is like, all right, we're not going to fight. <laughs> Let's all immediately throw this. 
quite fine. <laughs> we'll we'll do cool combat abilities, but we'll do so carefully, making sure not to actually do major damage. <laughs> my cool my cool thing is having a porcupine. I did it. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so if if you guys want to instead make this a performance about not really hurting each other, instead of going through the 15 minutes of combat that this would take to resolve, how about you all roll performance? Uh, to uh, have something like a cool fight in the like uh, your silhouettes in the fog make like a cool kill bill fight scene and then it dissipates <laughs> with a winner <laughs> that's probably better than I was thinking I was like what if I cast jump on Stuart and he just hops away like a bunny <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you can do that it doesn't get you out of the situation but it's funny um, before before we start the performance can I uh, cast shield of faith onto uh, our, our new friend with the porcupine in order to raise their AC by two so that they are less susceptible to being hit and it's easier to, to play up this performance. Oh, well, that's very thoughtful. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, this is your meet cute, right? Because Cortan and Vindros know each other, but you don't know Lola. So, like, the first time you meet, you're supposed to fight and instead you protect her. That's a good basis for a relationship. I like it. Yeah, well, I mean, again... F- f- Free love movement, we've got to make sure that everyone feels included. How else am I going to later convince people to join a certain cult? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you've got to you've got to love bomb them when you first meet them. You've got to really, really like just make them feel like you you care about them so that they'll join the cult. Oh no, not love bombing. <laughs> oh boy. I rolled a three. <laughs> I rolled a twenty-four. Uh, performance we're doing. Yes, yeah, so now we learn uh, about right. now the audience gets to learn about group roles. When the group wants to do something, everyone rolls and half of the people need to succeed on the DC or difficulty check, which is a number I have in my head. Uh I rolled a 7, but like can I get advantage because I thought to do the shield of faith thing? This is another thing that's you, you need to dice on. <laughs> Anytime we roll poorly, we'll immediately ask to roll for advantage, listing off a, some yeah. anonymous reason that happened in the last five to ten minutes. I should get, uh, yeah, I should get advantage because I have a porcupine and I'm exactly how it happened. Thank you. Yep. And Lauren should get it. Lauren should get it. She did. She did the the the, the shield. Do you see um, what I'm talking though about your guys' very specific way of playing D and D? Oh yeah, no, oh, we we are terrible. Us. Cheating? Is that what you mean? <laughs> Because we do that. Uh, no, but um, yeah. <laughs> can I uh, give a die of bardic inspiration to one of them? Okay, yeah. So w- walk me through this because we actually don't know how you cast bard spells, Corton. So I, I want to learn that. So tell me what you do right now. Oh, that's a really good question because I don't know how bards cast spells. Either. <laughs> <laughs> some, you have a spell focus. Some form of uh, performance oh, that yes, you do. Yes, okay, yeah. So... <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's see, and I need to get the pronunciation for mm-hmm. the technical term uh-huh. so that I don't get that incorrect. Uh, I'm very uh, excited. I've been waiting to hear you say this word out loud for months. W- w- really, have you? Yeah. You've been waiting for me me to say glossolalia? I have. Yeah? Oh, that's a thing. Uh, so, uh, Corton speaks in tongues. Oh, he sure does. <laughs> it's very ballsy to show up for your prison sentence of blasphemy and immediately start doing blasphemous shit in front of a crowd. I respect the uh, hustle. Thank you. The, the entire time Vindras is looking over just like, yes, yes, I understand. This is... M- this is moving me on a spiritual level. Uh, so you, what you did was give uh, Vindros a bardic inspiration die, which is something that you can roll to add to your score, which you, Vindros do now to try to get yourself out of this failure. You rolled a seven, you need a ten. What do I get to add? You get to add a d6. Uh, I rolled a one. Oh, That's not great. God. That did not save me from this. No. Okay, so the party fails to make this convincing, which means, uh, well, f- des- describe to me what you do, and I'll describe how it fails. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm- Stuart has a saddle as well, in case I don't want to ride the belly. Mm-hmm. You know, I like to think I'm just sitting in the saddle and, like, licking a quill. It's, it's, like, it's, like, a, it's like a popsicle, but it's all salt. Because I got a three, so I'm not doing anything convincing. <laughs> um, Vindras is is attempting to to whip sort of towards uh, towards our new friend. But, like, the intention is to be like, ah, oh, I just missed. Ah, oh, I just missed. Ah, oh, I just missed. 
Well, and and Corton grabs his chest and drops to one knee. <clears throat> So at this unconvincing display, the audience starts booing and starts throwing sharper things. They were throwing things before, but now they're dangerous. Um, and also, uh, I, at this point, I would normally roll for damage, but the roll 20 has ejected me from the promised land. So I can't roll dice this week until I figure out what's wrong with that. I'll roll it for you. Chris, uh, f- so everyone dexterity saving throw uh, to dodge the projectiles, which is a thing that a roll the players make. And then Chris, uh, roll d10 for damage. Okay. Oh. Uh, I got a five for your damage, Austin. All right, so it'll be half, which is two for people who succeed. Holy shit. I don't think anyone succeeded. <laughs> Conrad and I both botched. Yeah. Everyone fails? Yeah. Uh, well, there's two botches in there. Yeah, we should explain what botches and crits are. If you hit, if, if the number on the dice, not with any modifiers, you roll on that d20 is a 20, that's amazing. It's fucking great. You you did the best you could do. If you get a one, that's a botch. You, you real fucked this up. Two of us really fucked this up. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the two you most expect, expect it from, too, honestly. Well, so I can't see the rolls. Who failed? Uh, I did <laughs> and Lauren did. <clears throat> I'll say okay. So Corton and Lola describe uh, what you get hit with that like leaves a small scar or something from this moment. This is like a, a moment that you'll remember uh, as like a humiliation in front of a large crowd where you got fucking owned by the the audience. Pizza cutter. So <laughs> threw a pizza cutter at you. <laughs> they, that's all they had left after throwing so many knives. No, it, I mean metal is rare, so it would probably be um, like abalone shells oh. <laughs> okay. yeah like they slurp the, the mollusk out and just throw, throw it the out. shells yeah just just to really hammer home the class divide it's like hey not only can you not afford these but like they're gonna, they're gonna oh well, no there are there aren't there aren't actually abalone these are just old shells that have been here for god knows how uh. long that they've found they just throw them because they're sharp what if the pizza cutter was made out of the shells so they like lovingly crafted it <laughs> just, just to, to throw my face <laughs> Uh, so Corton and Lola are, are knocked down by trash and abalone shells, which cut them. Um, Vindros, you're standing outside of the dissipating cloud as they're being attacked by the audience, uh, at which point the crowd suddenly goes silent very abruptly. And they all look up to the press box because oh, no. the God King has exited his, ar- his like bulletproof glass, uh, sky box at the top of the stadium and you see him like walk out uh to the to a ledge and look down over you and none oh, of you fuck <laughs> none of you have ever seen him in person before uh but you've all heard the story this is the god king wolfram w-o-l-f-r-a-m he is the absolute ruler and religious figure of avalon um one thing that I say at the beginning of every season is the current religious uh, situation because it changes from season to season. I haven't brought it up yet. Uh, there are gods in season seven, but they are all minor. Uh, there's no like uh, Yahweh in heaven who can create universes. Uh, they're all like kind of the kind of deities who walk around and get into scrapes in like a journey to the West style uh, situation. So the God King Wolfram is a god, and that he is m- much more powerful than anyone you've ever met. But he is still killable, and he has—he's not on- omnipotent or omniscient. But to you, he may as well be. Um, he raises a hand, and you all hear like a rumbling noise. Well, that's not good. What is it? Um, I should describe him physically. The first thing to know. Is his species, which is I've never said this word out loud. Uh, Chris, do you know how you're supposed to? You know how to say it? Genasi is how I've always pronounced it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, G E N A S I. Uh, they are p- basically the uh, the humanoids who represent the elements. Uh, there are actually six main elements <laughs> in Dungeons and Dragons: fire, water, air, earth, positive, and negative. And the way those all interact make like sub elements, like. Uh, as you will soon find out, water and air make ice. It's like a sub-element between them. 
Uh, they're called quasi elemental. Not important. Uh, Gygax, Gary Gygax, who invented this, has a, an obsession with minutia. So there's like a whole system here you don't have to learn. But the important thing is that God King Wolfram is a salt genasi. Well, that's fun. So he's the saltiest of them all. And his kingdom is literally a salt flat, which he controls as a god. And the rumbling noise he, he, that was being made as he lifted his hand is literally the, a growing like salt quake of the, the ground around here, which he controls. No. No. Um, so Genasi look mostly human. Uh, their skin color varies wildly depending on the element. Obviously, salt is very pale white is his skin. He has uh, dyed pink hair. That's fun. Good it's for a, him. It's a cute look. Yeah. Otherwise, he has a kind of mixture of like uh, pompous uh, royalty. I was thinking uh, specifically Henry VIII for reasons which will become clear soon. That's the guy who had all the kids by different people. Right. How many how many wives did this man behead? Uh, that will be a plot point shortly. <laughs> um, so he's dressed like Henry the Eighth if he was an anime boy. Wait, did he get married to the widow next door? <laughs> I don't know if you specifically fucked someone in his harem, but it's it's not out of the question. Because I but heard so- he's been married seven times before. I yeah I, I do know <laughs> that, and yeah. everyone was an Henry. She wouldn't so- have a Willie or a Sam. <laughs> so pi- picture like a tall pale anime boy but dressed as like an old aristocrat with like dyed pink hair to make him look younger and cooler which he- so like a double dandy bishi exactly that is him and he raises his hand and the whole stadium quakes because he controls the element of salt as a god and um as that happens everyone make a strength co- uh strength Fuck. saving throw to not f- uh, to be able to stand because the ground is quaking. Do I get advantage because I'm sitting on Stuart? <laughs> Lauren, every time you ask for advantage, I'm taking an HP point from you permanently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, I think it's a valid question. I'm literally sitting on a porcupine. 11. Does 11 pass your number in your head, Austin? 16. Somehow. Well, 6 does not pass, so... No, so Cor- Corton is further humbled. You took an abalone shell to the face, and now you can't stand. You're getting owned, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think God King Wolfram gestures to the only person who didn't get owned by shells and who remains standing, which is Vindros. And he says, Mantis, finish this fight. You are boring me. Uh, I, I mean... I can, I can try, but I'm not much for, for, for murder doing. If you want me to heal them, I can do a very impressive, impressive display of healing. You know, lots of flashy glowing lights. You dare speak back to me, insect? Well, that, wow, that works on a couple of levels. It's- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, everyone in the audience, like, gasps. And he's like, I came here for entertainment, not back sass. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what if I cast jump on Stuart now? I have no idea <laughs> why. <jumped. laughs> Here's a classic <laughs> dice funk move. <laughs> Do it. No, because it would be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> He's just hopping around like a bunny. Come on. <laughs> and I'll just sit on top and clap the abalone shells together to make a little song. <laughs> Do whatever your heart tells you to do. Okay, I'm going to cast Jump on Stuart. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to roll performance. Okay. To see how compelling uh-huh. my <laughs> Abalone Shell musical is. Oh, this is so sad. Crit! I crit! Fuck me, running. <laughs> this stupid fucking show. I hate this shit. <laughs> He loves it. He's a simpleton. <laughs> okay, Lauren, describe what Stuart does to get you from be- out from under. The- <sighs> describe what Stuart does to prevent you all from being fucking murdered. Okay, so I kind of <laughs> jump on Stuart, right? And he just literally just hops like a bunny with the little springy legs. And then I just go, do, 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 clap, 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 abalone shells. And it's like a little song and a performance. And at the end, he rolls over like a dog. <sighs> Are you not? Wait, are you not entertained? <laughs> so like an organ grinder monkey routine, but with a <laughs> pony-sized porcupine? Yeah, and abalone shells. <laughs> that's my music. That's my music. It's 
instruments. <laughs> he loves it. He's he's so compelled. At God King Wolfram once again addresses Vindross and says, "Even an animal is more entertaining than you." Pathetic. Considering that the 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 leaping animal was apparently <laughs> sufficient, uh, Vindras is going to attempt to use a standing leap because Thrykreen get advantage whenever they use their <laughs> athletic skill to jump. <laughs> One of those bouncing horses, Lepizon or Lepizon. Yeah. She's she's gonna she's gonna try and do a real fancy like back flippy cool jump. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gymnastics show now. Yeah, acrobatics. Yeah, because the D and D writers were like, "Yeah, mantis are basically grasshoppers." That's the same thing, right? <laughs> uh, with advantage, that's still it's an eleven. It's above average. Why would you get advantage? Oh, for the the leggies. Cause, yeah, because the that. standing leap thing. The, 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 the <laughs> whole reason I did this. I'm paranoid. Um, <laughs> now, with only an eleven, I think uh, I think God King Wolfram just like turns to an advisor and something and says. We must do something about these savages. Uh, look into a a, a a pogrom, perhaps. Write that in my no. schedule. Release them. Release them. Release them. <laughs> um, no, I think he's just bored and tired of you, Vindros, and he's also just doesn't respect your species. So he's just like, no, you're you're an inferior, gross bug person. Get out of my sight. And he's leaving. That's rude. All right. Well. Uh, team, I don't think this is going. This is going terribly well for me. Oh, um, it's gonna be great. Don't worry about it. We're gonna find a way to get out of here, and it's well, gonna be fine. Well, I mean, if if you say it's gonna be fine, it's then I trust it's going to be it's fine. Be fine. The God King turns around with like a swoosh of his his fancy clothes and like goes to leave with his bodyguards. And you guys are like, no, this is fine. It's good. <laughs> and uh, literally, as the words "it's fine" leave Brother Corton's lips. The guy in the abalone costume just knocks him the fuck out with a blackjack. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because the the God King's leaving. The entertainment's over. You you didn't entertain oh. him with your fight. He didn't. You didn't suffer worse consequences because he was entertained by Stuart's dance. So it's not going to get significantly <laughs> worse for you in a way if that hadn't happened. But oh, I'm just gonna go back into the tunnel myself. <laughs> Don't punch me, please. <laughs> yes, yes. So Corton, who f- who failed the earthquake check and got hit by the abalone, is now knocked unconscious and dragged under the tunnel. Uh, and I assume Vindros and Lola follow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you are taken back uh, underneath uh, the stands into the inner workings of the stadium and to uh, cells or rather like a large holding area. It used to be a locker room because this was a rally ball stadium, but it is now your prison cell. And you is it is it one of those ones where everyone's all together? Yeah, because it was a locker room. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's specifically why. And so you three are put in here to have some. Uh, I mean, Corton, you can wake up whenever you want. That was just for, I, I mm-hmm. like the, the image of you being knocked out as you said that. Um, but whenever you want to uh, sure. t- join the conversation, you are left alone. You are locked in here. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I clearly, clearly was uh, doing an insufficient job of showing the joy of, of free love and nonviolence. No, I... no, don't blame yourself. It's... Uh, it's so difficult. Of course, people are resistant to the truth, but they'll come around. It just takes some time. Mm. What are y'all in here for? Um, eavesdropping. I'm eavesdropping so hard. You're in the same room. There's no. <laughs> there's no eaves to drop. No, I'm like. I'm like getting. I'm like getting up in there in their personal space <laughs> while they're talking to each other. I'm like, hey, uh, hi. Um, well, uh, 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 it's. It's not for polite company why we're here. Uh, well, I mean, I just think some of these charges are really dumb. Uh, I'm in trouble, apparently, for stealing this here, Stuart. Uh, um, but if you think, I mean, if we- you can't own the forest. Of course you can't. You don't, no, you don't own the animals, so I don't understand how it's a crime. It's a his point. You can't find. own any creature. They're just meant to be free. Right? I don't know, and the stupid pink hair. Lauren, should I edit in porcupine noises or should I attempt to make them? Please. Or do you want to make oh, them? I can try to make them. Yeah, they're very good. Wait, wait. No, that's like a that's like a guinea pig. Yeah, that's a moink. It's like a <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, we we yeah. found a video on YouTube of a porcupine. What's his name? He loves Teddy. Teddy, yes. He eats pumpkins and corn and he like talks. Like there's he's making little porcupine noises, but it sounds like words sometimes. Like they try to take the corn away from him and he's like, My corn. <laughs> 
Austin loves it so much. Uh, so the audience He's is the audience is hearing that now. <laughs> Is Stuart just in the locker room? They just let you keep him? Well, he, he he can't go away. Yeah, I guess you bonded to his soul. Unfortunately, there was a Rick and Morty episode that came out between when you came up with this character and when it aired, which uh, co- colors my appreciation for the soul-bonded animal. But Yeah, so we, we need to get out of here or develop a considerably higher taste for bloodlust. I don't know. I'm sure there's... How's about this? How's about this? I've got an idea for next time they send us out. Um, We beat you up repeatedly, but then I heal you back up, and it's a display of, of the wonders of healing. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, but like, I'll heal you up afterwards. Uh, 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 You'll I'm be fine. sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so nasty, but I, I, who the fuck are you again? Oh, I mean, I'm not going to beat myself up. Then I won't be able to heal myself because I'll be too beaten up. <laughs> but you've got to think about it this way. I, I don't know you. So how am I going to know that you're actually going to heal me? It could be a trap. I mean, I cast a protective spell on you in there so that I could beat you up and you wouldn't get hurt. I, I Goodwill gestures and whatnot. That, that was one time. I've known you for what? Half an hour? Uh, Vindras attempts to cast shield, uh, sorry, what's that? <laughs> uh, Vindras attempts to cast shield of faith again. See, it's more than, it's more than once, it's twice, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do apologize, but I do not like this plan. I don't, I, I don't hear you coming up with a better plan, so. No, the plan is fine. The target's the problem. Are you suggesting I, I beat myself up? I can beat myself no, up if you need me to. No, 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 my child, no. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> are you are you Cheryl from Archer? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I'm a much more impressive figure to be injured anyway. And if uh, you know our porcupine friend can be expected to keep it to a low injury level we could certainly have me take a few hits and you fix me up afterwards it'll be fine i i i i mean if 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 you're sure i i i, I mean it's just so much better if we can get a third person in on the act oh. i i i do agree it would be better if we could involve a third person oh <laughs> uh, no no thank you ah <laughs> I don't know what you want that third person for, but I'm not here for it. Just, just, just to help us in a performance of beating up, beating, beating him up. Uh, just I don't a little like bit. the way you phrase in, that. In a little bit, while people watch. I don't <laughs> like that. Don't like that. Uh, also, uh, I don't think another fight's gonna get us out of here, right? Kaboom! What was that noise? Did you hear a kaboom? <laughs> I heard a kaboom. What was that? <laughs> kaboom. I uh, know, awesome. No, no you, dude, take it. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was doing so good. I didn't have to talk for like an hour. I don't want to say it was your best performance in the history of Dice Funk, but... <laughs> Damn it. I'm never going to live up to that kaboom. Uh, the walls of your... Locker room shatter into icy pieces. Okay. (laughs) Sure. And who stands on the other side of that? I don't know. Who? The smoke clears, and there you see the white wolf. It's a baby. (laughs) (laughs) So she's ten years old. She is a sorcerer. She is a Janasi, although she is an ice Janasi. So she has uh, pale skin, not quite as pale as uh, the God King, but similarly, uh, white hair and disturbingly icy blue eyes. Like if you ever watched uh, Game of Thrones, kind of like what the White Walkers had, where her eyes kind of just look like crackling ice. That's fun. Uh, She is specifically 
a royal bloodline sorcerer, which is not normally a type of sorcerer you could be. This is a homebrew sorcerer. Uh, I want to give credit to the user FPGMD on uh, Reddit because they put together a thing of like 16 new sorcerer origins. And this is one of the ones on there that fit my character very well. Bless you. And I managed to add that in. Uh, she is full named Sabrina Wolfram, the daughter of the God King, the youngest daughter, I should say. Uh, but she's not, she's hiding that fact, uh, despite the fact that right now she is dressed 100% like some fucking Disney princess, uh, in every way possible. In the roll 20, I use icons to represent the characters. Uh, yours is just Elsa from Frozen. Uh, Mm -hmm. Corton is one of the, uh, the Hemsworth brothers. I forget which one. Doesn't matter. It's Chris Hemsworth. It's Chris Hemsworth in... Uh oh fuck what was the name of the movie Bad Times at the El Royale There we go Bad Times at the El Royale where he's just fucking shredded He's also a cult leader which is why I picked it mm. he's a sexy cult leader Uh Vindross is the protagonist from Hollow Knight one of the only good video games and Lola is just literally the lizard you like Gull Sand Gecko Yeah that kind of lizard So those are the four characters uh so Sabrina Wolfram the Genasi sorcerer uh, the White Wolf. Her name's the White Wolf. That's what you're going to tell them when you when you speak mm-hmm. and when you begin lying in a moment. After we're done reading your character <laughs> sheet and you just begin lying to the other player characters. <laughs> What's your alignment? Uh, she is lawful neutral because her entire reality is constructed on the fact that she's the daughter of the God King. So the rules that would be set up for him is what she understands as what the world should be. So that might not be a good thing. Uh it also doesn't help that she has an eight in wisdom, so she's very gullible. She is a very bad judge of character. Just terrible at it, and it's very unfortunate. Would you say she's bad enough at uh, judge of character to maybe ask a sex cult for help? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really, it's possible. Although she herself, she's not a fan of, uh, she loves stories. All the romance parts are awful. They're the worst. Don't know, they should cut every one of those out of every book. So that's fine. That's just her personal feelings on the matter. Also, I should note, she does have a very good friend in the castle. His name's Gentleman Bramwell. That's his full name. And he has a pet moose named Preposterous. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll get to meet both of those later (laughs) this season. Just throwing that out there in case Austin wants to cut them. (laughs) Also, in case my character falls down a hole. Uh, he might show up and just take over the rest of the season. Who knows? It falls in a hole or Chris hates her. <laughs> Why do you think she's falling in the hole? <laughs> what if you're just we're on this quest and you walk by a hole and suddenly out of nowhere King Badass That's, runs up and pushes her in the it, hole? I was going to say that. Oh, I'm back, everybody. <laughs> Chris blew out his mic doing the King Badass voice. <laughs> well... Uh, 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 hello, fr- friend. Oh, this isn't why I wanted to be. That sorry. It, go back to what you're doing. Oh, oh, it's okay. Um, you could you maybe help us? Do you do you do you happen to know just sort of which turns we would take to to you know head off out? You don't want to go out the stadium. You you want to take the walls out. God, gods don't patrol that. That that. Seems like a strategy. Could could, could we uh, follow follow you out? Would would you would you be willing to help us? You know, no, we... no, you don't even need to help. Really, we'll just uh, follow you out if you're headed that if, way. If, if yeah, if if we have the same goal, which is heading outside, then we should all just do it together, right? You want to ride on Stuart's saddle? I reckon we're about the same size, little lady. Well. I guess it would be good. That's fine. You follow me. I'm the one who's leading. Uh yes, of of course, of course. You're 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 in charge and we're following you. Do you need help getting in the saddle? Well, maybe. What is this looks sharp? Corton just sort of picks her up and lifts her up and just sets her into the saddle. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> You gotta teach children self-reliance. Well, now you're taller than me, so you command more respect. 
Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm the tallest. There you go. So, which way out? Tallest. I don't know, but I think it's that way. And she's just pointing back into the wall. That's better than we know. Lead ahead. I'm going to get back on Stuart's belly since the saddle is currently taken. Is there a saddle? Is there an under saddle? On the it's, bo- it's, like a ba- it's like a baby Bjorn. <laughs> Not the Bjorn. This is the third the season baby. in a row. <laughs> Every season you got a Bjorn in. <laughs> Bjorn again. Job at the bell, no sweat now, feeling swell. Uh, gee golly, it's a beautiful day. I'm gonna burn my troubles away. I'm going to live on the light of the town. The walls that hold me. I'm melting down. I'm rising up loud. I'm going. Meltdown May has begun. Who will be next? Me? You? No, you sound worse than I do right now. I started Meltdown May, and then it was Elon Musk, and now could it be you? Question mark? What is his... His face is so puffy. It's from all the union busting. It messes up your face. (laughs) Don't do it, kids. Be cool, I guess. Uh, So we should probably have an update at the beginning of this episode, because if you're hearing this at the beginning of May, uh, you might be confused about what's happening with the show because you didn't listen to Chris explain it. (laughs) (laughs) Wrecked! No, I mean, I don't know. People don't listen to every one shot. But uh, season seven is still coming. Uh, This will probably also be on the first. This credits will be on the first episodes of season seven if everything goes to plan. So maybe this will be redundant. But the show is fine. It's still happening. It's just uh, stuff, you know. We're in the middle of a global pandemic, and uh, please, Chaboy has been DMing every week for five years, and I was like, hey, Chris, do you want to do a couple more episodes? And he was like, I got you, fam. Please, my Austin. He's so sick. Do I sound sick? I feel sick, spiritually. Well, I mean, you do sound a little congested for you. <laughs> for me? I don't know what that means. That means you don't usually sound congested. Okay. <laughs> and now it does sound like it. Ah, uh, Credits. All right, executive ah, producers for Meltdown ah, May 2020, ah, <laughs> Joseph Timbrello. I was like doing that because he, Matt, <laughs> Extellaris. <laughs> Jade, we can't do this for everyone. No, I'm trying to speed run the shit and I'm making it worse. You really are. Jade. Brent, still every episode of Dice Funk Goatly. It's just occurred to me that I had more updates for Meltdown May, one of which is that Patreon messed some people's names up last month, so I apologize if that happens again. It's not me, I promise. They give me a spreadsheet. I can't do anything about it. Damn it! Conduit of evolution! Hold on. I had a Never. background noise. I was waiting. <laughs> Devin, Conduit of evolution. Mine was better. John Madeira, Conduit of Caramel Lattes. Nephis Decidia, a sheep with crushingly low self-esteem. What does a sheep have to be insecure about? They are soft. They go, meh. Um, and they're soft. And they're soft. <laughs> Those are the two important things. Yeah. Paul Mullen. Composting queen. <laughs> Rip chip human fighter and pal of Hark and Caleb. Eaten by an ink egg. Christman, casting a healing word on Austin's <laughs> blissy for round two. Well, at first I was like, oh, thank you. And then I got scared. Faith and Valor plus wife Cat Wings, who just finished season four of Dice Funk and is loving it more and more. Thank you. Thank you. Toshio Kuru keeps thinking they'll have until the 5th and missing the deadline. Okay, so here's the thing about Patreon, is it's a fucking nightmare. They could just be a company that's a box, and people put money in the box, and then other people take money out of the box. But instead, they took a bunch of venture capitalist money, and then got real estate in the most expensive city in America. I have no idea why they keep fucking shit up. But they're, it's... The, oh, okay, sorry. The 5th <laughs> deadline is because that's when the, proce- the stuff is processed, right? It's, it's more confusing. I should just do it on the 1st. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, don't yell at me. Andrew Groffin. <laughs> no thoughts about Patreon? Uh, um, I mean, there's a reason I haven't put one together. Andrew Groffin. 
I is yeah, it's all Andrew Grant's fault. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh belated birthday, Jamie, because Patreon messed up last month. Happy birthday, Jamie. There's a theme, huh? Oh my god. Dr. Goatman. <laughs> I'm excited for your Rammstein impression. Do host. <laughs> No, I forgot the first do. Uh huh. It's do do host do host bussy. Oh, okay, dang it! I was really looking forward to your Rammstein bussy. No, I think it's funny. Bussy. <laughs> you see, it's good. <laughs> Francois V. Hadron Master. Hold up! Oh God! Hold up! I know what a banana is, and that's not a banana. Is it a penis? Oh, I bet it is. I bet it's a penis. Uh, Jasper, sitting alone in the VIP. JK, conduit of Shafir. Is that something? Is that a thing I should know? I don't know what it is. It sounds like something you would know. No, that's chiffon. It's chiffon, uh, which can be fabric or a type of cake. Anyway. It's like the two Lauren things. I love, I love fashion and cake. I know. Uh, John JK. Watt. Oh. Oh, yeah, we already said that. Shafir. John, what? <laughs> Possum Kingdom Refugee. Random conduit of, would you like a hug? Sternad. Vinny, currently dreaming of Austin's bussy cakes. Z23619. Do you think anyone who... Bussy, there were a lot of S's there. Do you think people like came into this show kind of late and they don't know where the Austin's bussy stuff started and they're just extremely confused? Um... God, I've been doing the credits for how long, and I don't even remember where, how it all got started. <laughs> Did we say Kevin Dobbins? Because Kevin Dobbins. Oh my God, we have to speed this up. <laughs> Playing bucks for Patreon. A gambling pig in quarantine. Charlie Chocolate chuckled. You mean the chaos on <laughs> I'm almost certain we've had that one before, but it gets me so much. <laughs> Obama chuckled. You mean the chaos emeralds? <laughs> Pumpkin spice itself. <laughs> Robert Tuttle. Anthony, patron of Dora. Fi. Morgan Rapp. Mm, Haley Anderson. Pinko Sock. Back in the summer of 69. <laughs> Stefan, thanking you for your media delivered to grateful senses. Tis I. Zester. 69, Spoopy 420, Sean by, by Lauren's Ludes. A montage of goth Nifix staring out into the rain. A non-horny gift for Austin, and a very horny one for the goblin. Uh, a question we all need an answer to is, Anne smarter than King? No, she's not. No. A very much alive otter, wondering why Patreon reverted to a month's old name. I know, otters, I am also questioning this. You'd think J- Jack Conti of Pomplamoose, who owns this fucking website, would know how to d- send a fucking spreadsheet, huh? <laughs> a werewolf with a Chinese menu in its hand. Abigail Grace. How many times have I said, I wonder if the... The menu is a werewolf now, too. We've made the same joke every month for literally years, and many of these names. Good job, me. And we're eternally grateful for the opportunity. Thank you very much. (laughs) Abigail Grace. Adrian Y. Subscribe to Austin's monthly mustelid facts. Do you have monthly mustelid facts? What? Aren't you getting the newsletter? There's a newsletter? No, you're fucking with me, you fucker. Uh, (laughs) Yes, I am. (laughs) Adler. Adler. Adler? That's your name now. Aftershock. Too busy planning an art expo to update Patreon name. Let me tell you, Aftershock, you didn't miss it. it. Agent Hedgepiggle. Aggressively weeping and eating ramen. Oh, no. Aki Sabalainen. Al- Alistair Lutton. No, what were you going to say? Alistair? God, you're saying it weird and I can't remember now. God damn it. Alistar? Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> it's how you did it in Dragon Age. It's how you suck my dick. <laughs> Okay, A- Alex Vepra. Alexander de Vega. Alligator snakefish. I want to see an alligator snakefish. Would it be like a really, a really long, it'd be like a snake-shaped alligator with fins? Somebody draw it. Andrew Birmingham. Andrew Craven. Andrew Feggy, conduit of undervalued essential work itself. Yikes out there, huh? Yeah, pretty hard out there. But we should all come together and enjoy Fantasy Court in Season 7 oh, I- to take our minds off 
the world. I thought you were going to say mustelids. Also, mustelids. That's usually my coping mechanism. Also, yeah. pinnipeds. Mm-hmm. Anna. Anna, conduit of procrastination. Anon. Antonio, conduit of snacks. Arachnavolt, working on a plan to stop the murder hornets. No, it's their planet now. They're welcome to it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Archibald, Patreon, replaced my last name with an old one. H. Cactus. <laughs> Sorry, Cactus. <laughs> Ariadne, conduit of joining your local tenants union. Hashtag cancel rent. Oh, that's they can't cool. arrest all of us. <laughs> I think they can. <laughs> uh, they have so many weapons they have so many weapons there's not enough room I guess you should turn all the apartment complexes into jails <laughs> yeah I mean yeah. Arjun de Koning <laughs> to try to keep this I know we're not in the good vibe zone anymore but we should try to be near the, the good vibe yeah. zone Arjun de Koning Ash the gayest bitch in the midwest <laughs> Austin, yours, he doesn't like lore because it's not enough like homework. <laughs> you know, funnily enough, lore is very much like homework, but it's not the kind of homework I like. Who's like homework? Lore. Lore. At least in me. I was like, damn. No, you're you, you are a ton of work. Yay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Austin, still have that Skeksis voice. Isaac, conduit of gabble, gabble, gabble. B-D-O droid. Baggy Tooth, a property of Janiac, toucher of Laura's butt. BJ, if Lime dies, we all die. B Ray Echo. No, come on, don't make me read this one. I'll do it. For you. <sighs> Before we continue, no, you I gotta poop. Back in five. <laughs> big time Getty Lee, conduit of big time b- bat bass. Not bass. No, nope, not a bass fish. Wrist. What if they played a big fish like a bass? Yep. <laughs> what if what if you played a big fish like a bass? Bleaker. Blue Six. Boness. Brady, conduit of murder, survivor of Lauren's massacre. Great Relaford. Bro Jimbo. But chugging Clorox to kill coronavirus. Good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. Not thinking about that. But <laughs> buy your oh no, that's the one you wanted to do, huh? April showers brought dairy flowers. Callum, I just want Austin to be happy, Turner. <laughs> Sorry, dog. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you for that. I didn't read ahead. It really caught me by surprise. Cameron Abbas. Candace, listen to Dice Funk Starling. Cassette Blue. Chief Beef Thief. Chloe the dog, living her best life. Hell yeah. Chris, conduit of bad decisions, Walling. Chris from Ohio. Christopher Shirelow. Coffee Anon, the UN's premier secret, secret coffee shop. Secret. Secret. <laughs> Coho Blast. Quorum knows that we're supposed to call it Trials of Mana, but it'll always be second and sets two three to him. Nerd, 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 nerd. Nerd, nerd. Okay. Sierra Saldana, prophet of R and Jesus. Kasulu, conduit of my fucking tentacles. <laughs> I didn't like the, the flavor you gave that one. You don't like a little, the flavor? <laughs> no, it was a little uncomfy for me. Oh, you don't like the baby voice? <laughs> I am not sure I do, no. Oh, Austin don't like the baby voice. Cucumber. <laughs> uh, I got lost making a cucumber. Dan B. I like doing the baby voice to other people. It's a very good... It's an offensive weapon, but I feel very defensive when it's used against me. Maybe that's karma. <laughs> yeah. Dandy snuff. Daniel Marsden, conduit of unnecessary consonants. Daria, go freaking right. Dawning Frost. Does a slost. Does a slost. I thought you said sloth, so I had to read it again. <laughs> Declan Sands. Dennis Pancake Detlefson. Dice fuck Dungeons and Dildos spin off for dogs. No. DM Tau, now I have to deal with player shenanigans. Don Johnston. Dorian, conduit of devotion. Doro. Oh, excuse me. Dorum Estra Gargatorum. Dorum Estra just Gargatorum. Sum- I just summoned a demon, huh? I think I did. I did it better than you. <laughs> okay. Well, it's your demon now, bitch. <laughs> Dr. You- Isix. <laughs> it's not a competition. Dragon Nexus. Dylan and Rylan. Or Dylan and Rylan. I have to do it every time. The dog, listening on a lazy Sunday morning, also 
dishes. Ebrand, traditional butt chug liqueur. Come on. Okay, that's the second butt chug one. I know. Listen, we're all going through some stuff here in Meltdown May, but let's, let's use the mouth hole, please. <laughs> mouth hole. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Edward R. Jones the fourth. <laughs> You're thinking about mouth holes, I know. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Uh, Iowalta. Elder dog. Elderly goose. Conduit of meh. Eleanor Nanante sees Periton, horned vampire lady with depression. <laughs> Aline, oh well, never was there ever a cat so clever as magical oh, Mister Mustafalis. McCavity still slaps more. Mister Mustafalis, he's a crimer. He's best cat. Elizabeth Jackalope. Elusive Lily. Emberlin. Emma, wondering how Patreon fucked up her name last Listen, time. Listen, Emma, we, no, Emma. <laughs> we talked about this. <laughs> it's a Go problem. Go back up to the beginning of the credits. Austin <laughs> goes on a rant. It's fine. It's fine. And Diego Van Dane. Erwin the Logodeck. Evie, conduit of trying out new name in the credits. Fair Majesty, Empress Quintilian Galaxian. Filmquisition. Florian H. Francois Arsenal. Frank Sands. Furry scum infecting the credits prison. Gage, conduit of melancholy. G- GCU underscore nature abhors a white space. No spaces. Gideon. Nue, a Japanese mythical giant tanuki with a monkey head, tiger's legs, and a snake for a tail. Featured in the Megami Tensai games as a collectible demon or persona, the Nue. Must be nice to know things. <laughs> Ginger beers. Grapefruit juice. Graffiti of the rhetoric. <laughs> Halju. Harley the floral lyricat. Harry gonna learn all of Austin's new lore this season. No, I don't have any lore. It's not lore when it comes from me. That's world building when it's mine. <laughs> he was a psycho and pyropsychotic and burns Patreon for screwing up. Hey guys, it's Ashley. Hollow woman full of owls. I don't know if I'd like to be full of owls. I'd like to be covered with owls, but that's a different... I would like my house to be full of owls. I'd kiss them all in the beak. It'd be very good. I dread stairs. Ian Morgan. Isaac Curly Monkey Boy 107. Excalibur, a real foxy on the internet. I've made paper mache friendships. Regards, Mrs. Nesbitt. Jaden. I think that scene in Toy Story when he thinks he's Mrs. Nesbitt is a reference to something else, but I can't remember what it is. In Toy Story is an almost entirely made up of references to other things. Uh, James Neely, conduit of aggressively unhealthy quarantine sleep schedules. Quarantine? Austin might know something. Quarantine. Quarantine. <laughs> Shut up. Don't tell me what to do. I'm oh, sorry. Were you saying something about sleep schedules before I razzed you? Yeah. Talk about yours, fucking uh huh, madman. <laughs> yep, it's really it's damaging my mental health. Thanks. Yay, I love to damage mental health. Janiac, conduit of teledildonics. J, essential worker Logan, conduit of queerness, mage of life. Jealous goddess cosplay. Jen. Jess Veggie, conduit of veggies. Joanna the wrench witch. Joe G, L T E. John Pot. Josie, conduit of buffalo chicken pizza. Try a slice. It is good. Jew man cracking a bussy open with the boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I shouldn't still be getting <laughs> flustered by all the bussy talk. It should just be second nature to me now, but it does still get me. Julian, staring into post-apocalyptic futures. Just a jester. Josie, conduit of destroying gender. Now we're all goblins. Yay! The goblin, <laughs> the goblin takeover has begun. Jorgen, uh, indie monster, Winewick Ford, conduit of lactose intolerance. Kai, conduit of no regrets. Kaiji, fire sun, redundant conduit of name redundancy. <laughs> Keep for low. Caladri is clutching Mitzi, listening to Dice Funk, to laugh rather than cry. That's why I asked Chris to do some episodes, because he's very funny. He's very funny. Keller Automat! Ken, conduit of finally writing this goddamn PhD dissertation. 
Kidney, a beholder in a snazzy hat. Killer Cotton Shizno. Kiniku fan. Kitty, sad grieving burrito foe. Kobolds are better than goblins. Change my mind. I think you're going to try to change people's mind in season seven, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be a little gecko. Kurito Prime, playing games on mute while I call costumers from home. It's, I think it's customers. What did I say? Costumers. Oh, you know that's still a word, though, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but I just feel like it makes no sense in the context. What if they're in the costume industry, Lauren? Okay, Carito Prime, tell me if I'm right or if Austin's right, because I bet he's wrong, like always. But if I, if it was costumers and I just uh, changed it without consulting you, you'd be like, wow, that was really uh, presumptuous of you, Austin. So, Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh whatever <laughs> i'm putting my nose right on the mic now christina conduit of escaping capitalism and dating a skeleton itself criterion exhausted from jester's vaguely kyle badsvik kyle conduit a drop good hold on kyle conduit a drop good word squidward Squ- squidward's <laughs> brother drop good squirt <laughs> Is he like that fancy squid that Squidward hates? I feel like he'd be like that, but buff instead of like wearing a smoking jacket. Yes, exactly. Anyways. Kyle Khan hit a drop good word. No, he did, did it, it again. again. Why can't I do it? What is wrong with What's me? What's drop good word? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Khan did a drop good wood in King Badass Slash. Now I'm going to have to introduce a character named Goodword <laughs> to taunt you. It's good. No, I'm trying to get a squiddy thing again. Lady Misfit, Dino Fact. Ye- Shut up. Don't tell me about the Dino <laughs> Fact again. <laughs> <laughs> Calling me out whenever I talk about the dinosaurs. Ye Kui suggests dinosaurs develop flight more than once independently. I don't know what Ye Kui is. I assume a Chinese historian or archaeologist or something. I uh, I don't actually want you to shut up. I do love the dino facts. Keep them coming. Okay, Lauren, you keep reading. I'm going to Google this. Uh, okay. Larry Yelling NB, uh, also a host on Humans Hollering at News, which is a show that I'm on. Uh, Lars Owners. Lauren's mom stuck conduit of the untitled duck game. Oh, the, okay. Ye is a dinosaur. It's a specific... Ooh. The specific dinosaur whose fossils suggest this information. No, I thought it was a person who suggested this. You know what I'm saying? Like a fossil can yeah. su- suggest something through evidence as opposed to a person saying it in a, a meeting. Yeah, I know. I figured that it was discovered through evidence. I just didn't want to burst your bubble. Damn. Owned. <laughs> Where were we? I don't know. Liam, conduit a fill in my campaign with anime bullshit. Liam, conduit of headaches. Oh, Liam, same. Loopy Elephant, conduit of Austin's monthly mustelid. What's the mustelid of the month? Least weasels. Okay. I mean, because they're so tiny. Yeah, they're portable. In these trying times, you need one in a hand. You got to put them in your little pocket. You can have two. Oh, my gosh. One what? in each pocket if you're wearing a jacket. And think <laughs> of it, the, the, the possibilities are endless. A breast pocket, and then if you're wearing a hoodie, you have two other pockets. They're all just filled with weasels. And then a purse, or like a laptop case, or a briefcase. Oh my god. What if it was like a briefcase, and there's like little windows in it, and it's like a little bus, and there'll be like four sitting in there, and they're on like little stalls? <laughs> yeah, I want to go to like a, a dr- <laughs> it seems like a drug deal, and you have a uh, suitcase. <laughs> like, and I got you- the good stuff, open it up. <laughs> yeah, you got the stuff, you pop it open, it's just full of weasels. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Cates, Patreon, Larry Squakingham. Is that Squawkingman? Oh my god. Lauren Cates, Patreon, Larry Squawkingman's Bozogs balking at bullets, and so should you. Oh boy. There was a lot in there. Love you all, especially Chris. Conduit of favoritism. Everyone loves Chris. I've Everyone I've given I've given the show to Chris. It's his now. Bye. You don't need me anymore. Luca, 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 Luca. <laughs> Ludovico Limited. Thank you. Luke Powers. Luther, the conduit of a button quail in a pear tree. That sounds very cute. Manticore, Death Lord. The Cult of Gorfinax. Master Zemnahort. Matteo Zanek. Math Tiger investigates. Austin claims to be anti-lore, 
but he loves both Laura and Lauren. <laughs> That's not where I thought this was going. <laughs> I thought you had, you were going to call me out for adding lore, but it was just a good pun. Thank you. <laughs> it was very good. Matt, Matt Collier. Oh, yeah, it was your turn. <laughs> Matt Lackett's love seeing NPCs pet the wolf and Okami. Good health to all. Yeah, it's a cute game. Matthew, listen to Dice Funk and Neo Scum Schultz. Maximum side boob. Imagine, got a little 3D printing dick of sources for everyone I know. Melbent. Melissa the Dice Goblin is staying inside. Michael Hall. Michael Minkler. Conduit of Shouting Chris. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. Midlife Stasis. Conduit of Inevitability. Miles. No more conduits. Also, Min Min, please. See, not everyone's gotten the memo. People love conduits. They can't get enough, except for the couple people who have gotten enough. <laughs> <laughs> Modified Matthew. Namita Aneskin's Conduit of Error. Nicholas Dominic. Nicholas McDonald. Nick. Nick Thetford, you're slaying. <laughs> Nonfinite. Oh, Austin, you should follow my friend at Blackstone Mask. He won't touch your pussy. I'm so glad I wrote that one because it actually is my friend's. That's the very low bar for my friendship is please don't touch my pussy. Oi, Austin. <laughs> God damn it. Oi, Austin, when I eat that, should I use a fork and knife? Only respect for my McQuare. Hashtag Zoe Fan Club. Pie Rob Shurg. Pangolin. Period. There's just a period there. I feel like it needs to be acknowledged. So it's mm. just Pangolin. Yeah, it's a very definitive statement. Parasocial Peter. Praying pleasures perpetually parade your purview. Patrick Babcock. Conduit of This Is Fine Itself. Patrick Gifford. Patrick Williams. Please check my webcomic, RuinousFortune.com. Pocket Sundial. Pruitt Holcomb. Puckboy. Rasmus Edling. Razumi Yazura. Remsiv. Rob Dakin. Ah! Fighter of Rob Nightkin. Ah! Robert Chisholm. R.I.P. Lancelot. He got what he deserved. Pouring out for Lancelot, but I guess not because he deserved it. Oh my god. I guess spoilers. I don't read ahead, so uh, you can spoil me on anything in here. Ropun. Conduit of extremely cute Shiba Inus. That's my favorite kind of dog. They're very good. Rule 63, Bob Chiaclone. S. Kearney. Press F for Godhood. You did. You did. Salad Child. Sam. Scarlet Eyes Yuri. Sean Lyons Burke, conduit of deleted Patreon names. <laughs> oh, so you did it. We found the culprit. Ah, uh, it's his fault. Simmons, conduit of harder, Slatty. Sergeant Rattlebones. Oh, God, the Easter Bunny is slaughtering us. Send help. Easter was last month, right? Or did we move it forward? Did Jesus say it was okay for it to be in May now? Well, maybe he's slaughtering everyone because we didn't do Easter right. Oh, and this is like a message from the front. It's like Civil War time, so we haven't gotten it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I lost the plot of this metafiction. Shane Sedgwick! Shane Ware, conduit of hedonistic pansexual polyamorous switches. Simon Lee, conduit of chungus, bearer of dinkus, menino John Con. Simon Rasmussen. Sin Milk Tom. Sir Octopus, conduit of chivalrous cephalopods. Slime King Mike. I said Mike almost. Hold on. Slime King Mike. Conduit of subjectivist is beef. Wait, what? <laughs> beef. Slime... <laughs> Slime King Mike. Conduit of subjectivist is big beefy elicitities. Spaghetto Hearts for Final Mix HD Chain of Sleep Prologue. Sparman Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it anymore. I don't want to read the credits. Do it. Do it. Don't make me read Do the it. credits, Lauren. Read it. Read it. Stank bussy smelling like Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> Starlight Glimmer did nothing wrong. Steve. <laughs> Steven Martinez. Steven Martinez. Read as condescending SpongeBob. Don't read that or that. Fuck. <laughs> it was like landmines. There was, I just kept getting blown up. <laughs> uh, 
starlight glimmer did no wait no sorry i got distracted by the all the parentheses Cyretha says check out the last unicorn novel and movie tab of the spokes tales of inquiry uh Tal and Nasty, Quarren Queen, Conduit of Living in Constant Fear that I've met you before and utterly embarrassed myself. Uh, that's extremely possible. It's not a gr- big city. Yeah, so. no, it's very small. I think you would know if you saw Lauren in person, though. She's very tiny, like microscopic, and very blue. Green. I'm not it's blue any- the- I haven't, No, it's not. I haven't been blue in a long time. So I was at your house the other day. How did, how did you forget my hair color already? Many cultures don't have different concepts and words for blue and green. That's why they call them blue lights in the stop sign oh or in the God. traffic lights. Did you know that? Huh? Huh? I knew that you could suck my dick. Terra flops. <laughs> no response to that? No. <laughs> Your feelings hurt? Yes. You don't have to suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Teresi Pyro, transing June Egbert. I was like you had to call it off. <laughs> like it was a life debt. <laughs> uh, did you say Terezi? I did. The murderer is small goose who's secretly standing directly behind you. The precursor. Titus. <laughs> Titus. Sounds like sounds like a funny way to say titties. Oh my god. Uh Tim Lutton. Toby Gleason Stack. Tom Bowers. Trees, they are us. Trevor S., the goblin teacher. Shayness. Universal Toby. <laughs> Using <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> You're getting like all of the bussy ones this month. Using locate creature to find Austin's bussy. Victoria Melito, conduit of quietness. Ward Van Open. William Vinky. Ziphosaurus. I read ahead. Yam! <laughs> you expected a patron, but it was me, Dio. Zoltar, the Viking death metal caterpillar. Conduit of retribution. I'm taking this one too. ZZZ, okay, I guess a bunch of people have this idea. Oh well. Okay, you can the other one. Because <laughs> you wanted me to read this one? Yep. Uh, it's parentheses, Austin finger bangs you, close parentheses, Patreon tier when. That's not a Patreon tier, first of all, because you can't exchange money for it. Second of all, because it's called it's called twitter.com slash Austin Yorski at DMs. <laughs> oh, so you're trying, to, you're trying to finger bang the fans, Austin. I'm not trying to, I'm just uh, saying Austin. that's where... It, I'm just saying, if you were interested in that service, that's where you would go <laughs> to my God. DMs. You heard it here first. Pay him money, he'll finger me. Uh, no, I specifically. Oh my God. I, I, mean- <laughs> I hope the law school doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny a lot of people have said over the years i've been doing content on the internet for like 10 years i've had a lot of people say like oh i have a crush on austin or whatever but i've never had a genuine dm slide but now that i've said this out loud on a recording it's absolutely gonna get ha- it's gonna happen now but only in troll ways oh, sad see, i've had a lot <laughs> yeah, it's your business model even before that oh okay okay it's well fine video. i didn't know it was a competition lauren <laughs> well it is and i won <laughs> You certainly did. Have they just been regular hetero slides, or have you gotten finger bang slides? Oh no, it's it's neither. It's more. It, it, there's very rare hetero sliding into my DMs, which is honestly what I prefer. Wait. Okay, hold on. Beep. Stop the recording. Uh, what's going on here? What's what kind of slides are you getting, dog? Gay ones. Nice, dude. Yeah, it's good. I love it. S- <laughs> sick. Cool. Okay, okay we're that. back into the show. Beep. <laughs> Read that thing. Huh? I need you to read that last one because I don't got it. Oh, it's just uh, Rain Zucus conduit of messing with the format, and they've put an infinite an infinite amount of like Unicode shit between every letter, so it looks like. Uh, I thought it was a Patreon messed up, but no, they did it on purpose. Yep, they've certainly fucked with the format to get at the end of the list and make it look like it's something that would summon a demon, which is a theme. Um, I completely got lost in the the fingering talk, as is usual for me. Uh, where are we in this credit recording? Let me check. Oh, Lord. 37 minutes. Completely unacceptable. Not gonna happen. Check out all the links in, in the episode description and give us money. 
Yeah, we're going to have to redo the entire credits. Thanks a lot, whoever no, sent in the finger-banging question. We you certainly are not redoing the credits. I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I have plans. Ooh, look at me. I have plans. I'm Lauren. Yeah, exactly. It's quarantine. Stay inside and pet your cats. I can have plans at my house. Okay. Uh, yep, the links are in the description. Uh, it's, you know... It's an unusual time. We very much appreciate your support if you can give it. Um, thank you very much for being understanding and cool and sexy. This is why they keep ca- talking about your... I almost said cocking about your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> cocking about my pussy. Damn it. Too bad we don't give credits episode names because cocking about my pussy would be very good. <laughs> so good. Oh, Lord. Well, have fun cocking on people's pussies, everyone. <laughs>